and welcome to episode 223 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, the place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. I'm Vince Hunt, creator of the Red Mask from Mars, and joining me this week are the creator of Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. And the man who's a jet setter and is has been all over the shop um, in every way, shape or form, it's Mr. Tony Esmond. All right, baby cakes. Hello. Yes, it's, it, we haven't recorded for, um, I think, 13 days, something like that, 14 days. That's, yeah, I was missing it as well, because I was just watching videos of Dan at Leamington, just to cheer myself up. Yep, yep. We'll, we'll, we'll a talk a little bit. This this show, we've got con fever, Yeah, as I, as I said on social media, and I congratulate myself for sounding so witty when I posted it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we're very much a convention-heavy show this week because we've got a little bit of a con talk to start off with. But also, we're going to be talking about Thought Bubble properly for the first time since this show started. Yeah. It no won't be hi- hypothetical tried, nonsense. Got someone on. Yes, <laughs> yeah. This week, we're very pleased to be joined by one of the group of fantastic people behind this year's Thought Bubble Festival, taking place between the fourth and the tenth of November. Welcome to the show, Chloe Green. Hello. Hello, Hi, Chloe. Chloe. Sorry on. for evading you for so long. <laughs> it wasn't you. Yeah, Don't totally understandable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one who sought us out at MCM this I year. I did. I did. I tracked you down. Yeah. One of the few. <laughs> like a hitman on the dark web. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Which was a whole conversation we all had before this show started <laughs> that you'll never know about. Um, yeah, or maybe if I, Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, if I yeah. find a decent outtake, then you might hear it at the end. Um <laughs> Yes, but yes, Thought Bubble is obviously where it's building up. It's almost here in a, just under how many weeks? It's three weeks, three weeks ish. Bloody hell, is it that close? I've got yeah. It's ridiculously Bloody close. Oh, yeah. got, I bet you've got more than me, but I've got a, quite a lot to do as well. <laughs> oh my god! There's an awful lot of uh, comic creators out there who still have an awful lot to do. There's a lot of comic printers out there. God bless you um, for all the hard work you're doing at the moment. Um, for Thought Bubble, because a lot of people launch stuff at Thought Bubble. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, yeah. This week, um, we we finally got one of the Thought Bubble gang on on to talk about the festival. So we're going to go a, a bit more in depth than just three blokes hypothetically talking about what could be at the show when we have no idea. <laughs> uh, um, so, which is good. It's exciting because we wanted to properly sort of talk about because Thought Bubble is is kind of the big one. It's the glass it brief. It really is. Yeah, yeah. especially for comics, right? Because uh, yeah. for indie comics especially. So we're going to yeah. get stuck into that. Uh, soon enough but do you know what else you can get stuck into when it comes to <laughs> I, that was a terrible segue because as soon as I started saying <laughs> uh, it I thought uh, about this could go very say, very badly that. Yeah. yeah yeah but if you want to get stuck into reading comics do you know where you can go comic house yes <laughs> <laughs> he was my table mate at Leamington and he stepped up like a pro once again oh. just then <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's the best table mate ever he is he is, he is. And he I ser- brought uh, food for the masses, you know, I was giving out chocolate mini rolls. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We'll get on to that controversial topic <laughs> very, very <laughs> shortly. But yeah, this show, as always, is brought to our good friends, Comic House, who are the indie comic marketplace with a difference. Um, if you go to comichouse.com, there's loads of indie creators who are just putting their books on there and selling their hard copies of the books, and it's just another avenue to get your books out there. But we talk about the app every week. I mean, that's the thing we focus most on because it's brilliant. And it's, yep. Yeah, yep. there's a huge sort of database of indie titles on there we're all on there in some way yep. shape or form yep. as well as a lot of our listeners and well, books we've written are on there yeah yeah we... it's not just holiday snaps of us <laughs> oh but that could be a oh yeah, a i, I said a zine, zine. For you. bristol zine <laughs> fair here we come just in time <laughs> that one yeah, yeah. um <laughs> and you'll probably be able to read that on comic house when the time comes but there's loads of stuff being added all the time dan what's on there at the moment We've got uh, Miskatonic High, issue one from publisher uh, Danger Dads. Impossible from Chris Sides and uh, Jake Rowlandson from Marcosia. Oh, I'm glad that's on there. That's, that's well fantastic. Yeah. That's a really yeah, good comic. Uh, Surrealsville, issue 16, another Surrealsville. Bloody He's hell. He's kicking him out, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, the Super Fun Adventures of Jax by Marcosia. I gave that a read today. That's got some great painting style. We was only talking about that the other week. Oh, and cool. uh, Smoke and Mirror from Marcosia again. So, uh, All right. Yeah. Nice. I'm meeting Marcosia Harry well. tomorrow from Marcosia for a coffee. So. Oh, look at you. That look oh. at me, hobnobbing it. Yeah. Yes. What did you just say? Hobnobbing, hob-nobbing, hob-nobbing it. it. To you, oh, I know right. they're like a cheap form of biscuits. You get a little, but, you know, it has other meanings. <laughs> Chris is doing, doing a follow-up to Impossible, is he not? I think he is. Yes. So. 
Yeah. He is, in fact, yeah, because I was there yeah. when he signed a contract uh, or something. It's, it's yeah. a very different sort of style of book, apparently, isn't it? Um, but oh, I is it? I can't wait. It's, it's the continuation of the story, but not to spoil Impossible, although you should all read it because it's amazing. But the way it ends... I think the second book is going to be a completely different kind of story. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's a whole different environment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but you can read like all of those books and more on ComicHouse.com. There's a 14-day free trial, uh, subscription service, and for only three pounds a month, you get access to all those books we mentioned and tons more. It's not like Netflix. Like when you want to find a film, you can't find it. This stuff stays yeah. there. As far, as far as we know, it stays there, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just there's an there. absolute watch of comics because I looked at the superhero genre today, and there's loads on there. Yeah. Okay. And 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 if you haven't tried it yet, now's the good time to to do it because normally when these things start up, much like all these other sort of streaming services or other kind of things, when they first start up, they don't have that much. Um, but now there's a huge database, and you yeah. you, you know you won't. We're number have... two in the charts. Yes. But we're number uh, one in people's hearts. Yes. Oh, yeah. number four is number two. You look at yeah, number two was always the greater one. Look at Vienna; it never made it to number one, did it? Because uh, Joe Dolce, shut up your face, made it to number one instead. The, we have songs. to do a pub quiz. You'd be amazing on a pub quiz. <laughs> it's more credibility <laughs> being number two. I think that's how I feel about it. Obvious jokes insert here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, just, let's just leave that for the audience. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah. um, Chloe, that was our advert. How did you feel that went? Was that okay? Good, yeah. I felt yeah. like I shouldn't talk because it was very professional. <laughs> <laughs> too kind. <laughs> too, too too kind. But <laughs> but did you know that if you go to comichouse dot com, you can find out more about the service now? Yeah. Um... <laughs> yes. So Chloe does know that now. She does. I do. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, God bless her for putting up with all this nonsense that we'd be talking. Um, but yes, like we say, um, it's very much convention season. Um, I I can't think of a time when it, it has been busier, uh, like October especially. This might be the busiest month I've ever seen it for conventions, whether it yeah. be um, you know the larger shows or the smaller shows. Because mm. me and Dan, obviously, we just did Lemington. Yep. Um, you saw you heard a bit of the audio last week. Thank you very much for yeah, for, for checking joke. that out. We tried I'm to get side of the convention to the other. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> if you want to see Dan Butcher's walk, walk round sixty percent of the sh- yeah. <laughs> the convention floor, I did get grief from the convention organizer for not doing the whole entirety. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a video on our Facebook group. Um, awesome comics talks you can find out that there and it's on our twitter and stuff as i was well. also broadsided by a former 2008 d editor so uh, <laughs> were you on twitter oh you're twitter, you? yeah 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 i yeah. didn't get the joke link yeah yeah oh good old john freeman pointed it out to him thanks john yeah. but thank you yeah. to anyone that came up took a card met us chatted to us and generally had a, had a nice time at the show it was a good yeah. fun show great venue always good catching up with their some of the people there some of our favorite creators were there we got to hang out with them um, Daryl Cooling Thorpe. turned up. Kev Cooling turned up and saw yeah. the camera. That's yep. the only bit I saw with him. Yep, he's the dude. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There, was, there was lots of great people there. Some of some of whom you might hear on future episodes. Yep. Namely, the Halloween show, which has been put in place. So there you go. Yeah, we've got a competition coming up later. Yes. yes. Hashtag competition. Yeah. Don't say hashtag competition. That's the most broad. Right. That's the broadest hashtag I've ever seen in my life. I know, but it gets listeners if you do that. Oh, Remember yeah, we did true. it before. We did it before, didn't we? It worked. We didn't. We didn't even. Nobody won that of, competition. Yeah, a load of randos just follow <laughs> you. Did you say like... nobody won that competition? You can't just yeah. say that we're doing competitions and no I one made won. Up, I, it was in the early days, and I made up a load of names of people that won because nobody, <laughs> nobody went in for it. Oh and no! Went, We've Dan now been. Oh, this show's a sham. People know it now. <laughs> Unbelievable! I was waiting for the tell-all book in the next ten and years. Dan goes, I didn't know those people won that, and I went, oh, I made them up. I made those names up. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, folks, that was about 130 episodes yeah. ago. So yeah, on the record least, there, I, I didn't know about that. That was yeah. fraud. No, I didn't, I wasn't <laughs> in it. We gave them to charity. We gave the prizes to charity. It's fine. <laughs> but, but yes, oh, yeah, we were at Leamington. Thank you very much for um, for meeting us and chatting with us and um, picking up some of our comics or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. We might as well do these in order, aren't we? Um, I guess because while we're at Leamington, Tony, where were you? I was in New York, so I did New York. I did the. I didn't do the whole day at the no Brow table, but I did a substantial lump of time at the no Brow table, and it was um, basically going, oh, do you want to heal the book? There you go. Do you want to heal the book? There you go. Do you want to heal the book? There you go. It was like literally that many sales. Wow, okay. It was like, we was sold that your out pitch? The, the was book. that as Sorry? short as it was? 
They just wanted the book and you went, there you go. Do you know what? Having done MCM recently where you people come to the table and they go, they sort of scream, oh, Hilda, in your face. <laughs> and you have to sort of explain to them what the comic is. And, the fact, and then you go to, did you know it was a comic first? Mm. And they look at you physically before running off and screaming at someone else. Um, this was like, oh, did you see the comic? Oh, no, there's a comic. Brilliant. How much? That was what it was like. Oh, okay. Really, um, really enthusiastic people. A lot of really nice people, a lot of families, that sort of thing. But it was absolutely packed. There was talk about Sunday being as busy as Saturday this year, and um, I can see that it was. Did I send you the video of the sort of sea of people just walking past the table? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's exhausting, mate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely exhausting. If you want to go to the loo, it took you about three quarters of an hour. Um, <laughs> to get there, not why, you're, not why you were there. Yeah. Well, I'd had a lot to drink, to be fair. Oh, so, well, yeah. blimey. Um, but yeah, so can I just name a few people? Yeah, uh, okay. sure. So Jeff, Jake, Sam, Jane, Benny and Louis on the No Brow team on the table. We had a, an absolute blast. A really nice blast. Yeah, so we, we had a table that was part of the Silvergate Netflix production company. And they had built a woodman sort of thing and all this sort of thing. So they, we, we're getting sort of double customers, really. Hmm. Um, uh, my pals, Ed and Amri and Adrian. Um, the, the mighty Harris was there. Um, so I, 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 I had dinner with uh, Mr. Cucumber. And <laughs> uh, we, met up with, uh, we met up with Sarah as well. Uh, and it was probably one of the funniest evenings of my life. Not also ruined by the fact that we watched Dan walk around um, Limington. <laughs> about five times on my phone because it was amusing. Uh, I flew out with Mr. Wild Goose, so it was good to see the reception. He sold out, I think, pretty much in a day. Of wow. All of his, just like a, people flooded to his table. Um, I saw the Vanda, um, Arena and Nazelli from Europe Comics, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll go to them in a minute, I'm sure. But um, they were super, super good company. I spoke to Joe Pruitt from Aftershock. Uh, Tony Wolf, who's an actor from The Blacklist, came over. He's also a sort of small press comic creator, so I had a chat with him. Uh, Nicola Love, who organises Glasgow. Uh, do you know Nicola, Chloe, at all? I know her via the internet. Right, yeah, I get you. I really want to go there soon because it just seems like the friendliest, nicest community. It is. It really is, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, Claire from the Fandomonian Network, who very, I don't know if you remember, guys, she did a review of awesome comics anthology. Yeah, of course I remember Claire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we yeah, remember lovely. meeting her at uh, True Believers this year. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I was there when she came over. I think I must have been somewhere That's else. That's where she got yeah. the badge, Tony. Oh, because she had an awesome comics badge on, yeah. She yeah. sort of pointed out. She walked off, yeah, so it's good. Um, Brennan Wagner, uh, Michael Fife, I mean, you name it, they were there. Um, I bought a page of John Bernhardt, much to my great pride and pleasure, He's sitting in front of me. How did uh, you uh, get that back? You in hand luggage? I had, I uh, know, I had it in, um, I've got a front, I've got a suitcase with a front sleeve pocket, and I yeah. bought one of those sort of plastic hot flip sleeves, uh, okay. which was good. Um, it was... Um, I'm going to say I'm tired of people talking about movies. Please talk about comics. I'm going to yeah. say if you if you mention Doctor Strange, suddenly they throw themselves in talking about the Doctor Strange movie. I want to talk about Doctor Strange. There was a bit of that going on. Yeah. Um, I got to hold an issue of Action Comics 1. That's pretty exciting. Wow. Um, Did you have to wear gloves? Uh, no, it was slabbed, so I didn't. But, oh. uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, it's very exciting. For those who don't know what slabbed means, what is slabbing, Tony? So slab is what really freaky comic people do to preserve comics and it it much much ups the price of them and they're encased in plastic basically with a yeah. um, 9.2 or 3.1 or mm. whatever they're grading on the top of it you know yeah um 11 o'clock co comics guys came over so vince david and um mr wood jason they came over and had a good chat with them it's good to see them i never made it to the party in the end because uh i went out i went out with we were had a, a no brow meal um but that looks that looks good as well oh, the only thing that did irk me somewhat is the lack of attendance by creators at their tables in Artist Alley. Um, really? I think we're getting this. We're getting quite a lot of this now. I keep seeing it. Is where creators are turning up at like one p.m. or something at their table. I took. I, I was going to do like a piece on it and take. I took like long pictures of you know ten tables that are empty in Artist Alley at like eleven a.m. and stuff after they've been open an hour. And I think. Come on, guys. You know, a lot of people That's queued up. That's fucking bad, yeah. Yeah, a yeah. friend of ours, a friend of ours, I won't name them, but a friend of ours queued up early to get in to get this sort of limited print, as did I for another creator who also wasn't there. Because that, there that's, that... that's something that, that's no fault of any of the organisers or any, anything to do yeah. with that show itself, yeah. isn't it? It falls upon like the actual exhibitor themselves, doesn't it? Yeah, if you're offering a limited edition tr print that you need to get to your table by 11 to get a copy of or it will be run out, then and the creator don't turn up at their table till 12, then I've got to tell you, that's done the creator. Yeah. You know? I can uh, imagine it gets a bit shirty with the people lining up. Yeah, 
Like, yeah, it was a bit. Yeah. People want to cut, get that print, so they're being a bit, maybe a bit shovey, pushy, trying to yeah. get in. I guess yeah, with, yeah, also with big that, shows, probably. you plan your time, don't you? You plan to do this yeah. so you can move on to the next thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do. You really do. And that's and people get in the queue two hours early so I can get, you know, mm, if, if not more to be fair, you know, and you, they were legging it into Artist Alley and there was no one there. Yeah. It's, uh... Is that because they were doing other things then? Or I can't understand why someone would want to be at something so big as New York, I know. not be there the whole time. Well, um, I, I, I could only speak to a couple of the people that I, I won't name them, but they were just late. Well, that's, um, that's fair enough, I guess. Yeah, they were just, they were just telling them. I, I can imagine if they had a panel or something. Um, yeah. That's, that's kind of what fine. I was thinking if they had like yeah. another. But the the um, more responsible, um, the Cadence comic book people, there was just a long, there was like five tables empty. You know, wow. just okay. 10 o'clock in the morning. And they were, certainly weren't on a the panel then. You know. Right. Um, Interesting. We're not, we're not, we're not a, a wallet for these creators just to take money off us when they fancy it. You know, that's how I see it a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my only moan of it. To be fair, the, the, the rest of the weekend was great. Yeah. Like, I spent time at Aftershock, Vault, Valiant. Yeah, I spent a lot of time at Euro Comics. They had like a little lounge set up, so I managed to sit down with oh, Irina. Oh, God. Irina. I knew you like, were coming then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think someone had made biscuits, and we all sat there eating biscuits and like chatting to each other. And uh, yeah, yeah. I got I got a few interviews. I got <clears> three interviews. Um, do you want to play them now, V? Yeah, we might as well put them in now. Yeah, Tony managed to get a little bit of audio while he was on the shop floor. Yeah. Um, do those you need to name them, sen- or, or should yes. it be a surprise for people? It's up to you, Tony. How do you want to Let do me it? give a warning. For those who are of a sensitive nature, <laughs> we, we, we interview Man ver- I interview Man vs. Rock, and it goes just off the rails immediately. Yeah. Just straight away. You guys have heard it, haven't you? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's among, amongst the three interviews, there's um, um, Man vs. Rock. I'll leave it at one of them, but um, one of them is a, is a big hero of ours. Yeah. So we've talked about nonstop. Um. So, uh, from the floor at New York, here you go. I'm here with Ben Slarback. Yes, get in. Um, we reviewed Exilium, um, I'm going to say about six months ago. Probably about the second or third issue, I think, around that time, was it? Is that right? So, how did you come to work with Alterna and Peter Smetti? Um, I originally used to uh, cooperate with him on... Um, he used to put out an independent publication called... Um, Make Mine Indie. I don't know if you okay. recall it. So it, it contained previews of indie books that he used to put out on Comixology and other platforms. So I got to know him through that. And then when he opened up uh, submissions for his new newsprint line, I uh, immediately saw the appeal of it. And I was very quick to jump, uh, jump in on that and submit it. Now I have to say, you and I have travelled quite a distance to be here because you're... Well, which, whereabouts in Australia are you from? So I'm from Sydney. Oh, OK, cool. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a very long flight, yeah. So do you find the New York Comic Con work sales-wise for you? Does it get, do you get in front of publishers and stuff like that? Or? Yeah, and not only do you meet new readers and uh, you, know, you build up a following, but you get to network a lot and meet a lot of new publishers. Oh, cool. Yeah. Good. Now, Exilium has got a touch of, I'm going to say maybe Alien Nation or V the series, something like that about it. Did you want to tell the listeners what it's about? Yeah, yeah it's got a little bit of alienation in, in the way where an alien race comes here seeking refuge. So they're on a run from a, from a more powerful force that's obliterated their planet, run them off their planet. Uh, they've got no, nowhere else to go, so they come to Earth seeking refuge. Uh, obviously, the people here are divided. Some are for, some are against them. Conflict erupts um, down the track. That powerful force, who are unknown, turn up at uh, Earth's door yeah. on the trail of these refugees, and then all hell breaks loose from there. Yeah, cool. So it came out, what was it, five issues, was it? I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a six-issue six. series, yeah, yeah, with the sixth one actually being double-sized. Okay, wow. Yeah, okay. so when I started it, I told Peter, yeah, I don't know if I can do it in six. <laughs> uh, he said, it's okay, make this sixth one uh, uh, double-sized. So, cool. And that's how it ended up. Yeah. And you've traded it now. I noticed your trade slightly smaller, trade size, is it? Was that, was that a uh, purposeful yeah, so thing? Turner do six by nine inch, which right. is more like a book size. Yeah. They find that uh, it distributes better with IPG to bookstores. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, in that format rather than the American comic format. Yeah, it's a brave new world. Yeah. yeah. So what's next, Ben? So we'll have a new run of Exilium uh, hopefully next year. New story arc. There is a one-page epilogue at the end of last issue that sets up the next storyline. Okay. okay. And then uh, yeah, I've got some new graphic novels coming up. I've got another sci-fi one, kind of like a Moby Dick slash Old Man and the Sea set in space. 
Right, okay. So, yeah, so yeah. a futuristic take on that. Um, we've got some all ages graphic novels. So you, like, the, the new book is The Map Maker, is that yes. right? It's an all ages book? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the very latest one. Uh, it deals with a mysterious person known as the Map Maker who's got a special ability where he creates a map and it turns into reality. He can create landscapes. So it's a power desired by the king, by everyone. So they're all after it. A race to reach him, who reaches him first. It looks lovely, man. It looks perfectly lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, where can people find you online? Where can they get your books? So on my website, benslabak.com, as well as Comixology, quite a few of my books are listed on there as well, including my series Trail, which is my first series, which is more kind of like Indiana Jones-style action adventure. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And on Twitter, you're on Twitter, yeah? Yes, so Ben Slabak at on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Well, yeah. Nice one. Thanks, man. Yeah, cheese. Thanks. So I'm here with Enrico Marini. Uh, much talked about on the podcast. Um, creator of books like Desert Star, which I think is where I first discovered your work through Europe Comics, Enrico. Batman the Dark Prince Charming, which has been out about six months now, is that right? Yeah, even more. I think it, they did the first book it did two parts, yeah. and now it's the collection is out now for four, six months now. Yeah. Lovely. And one that we, mo- we most talk about probably is Eagles of Rome, which we absolutely love. Is it going to get an English printing? We needed a, a nice printed copy. I bought a French book and I can't understand French, so... Yeah, I like that. Yeah, there are uh, publishers who are interested, so Real. we are nego- negotiating. <laughs> We're going negotiating this. Cool. Yeah, I would love to, to, to see, yeah, maybe an omnibus or something. Yeah. Uh, That's a good job, because it's five volumes in all, I think. Uh, there are five now, yeah, but uh, I I want to do more. So oh, it's uh, yeah, I, yeah. If any, I can't spoil it, but yeah. if any yeah, yeah. survived the, fa- the fifth yes. book, so um, if there are still some characters around, Real. and I, I I have some more uh, ideas, and um, there will be a follow up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now you've done a couple of American conventions now because I saw you doing. You did a bit of an American tour of. You went to San Diego, was I it? Went to San Di- yeah, San Diego. I'm usually. More, I mean, I work in Europe, uh, so I do more conventions in Europe. Yeah, yeah I've been to San Diego. It was lovely last yeah. last year, and and, San, and New York is is great too. Yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, it's New York. So it's yeah, exactly. It's like an event itself, isn't it? Because yeah. I follow you on Instagram, and I think there was lots of pictures of you out in the desert and all kinds of things. You did, you you really experienced America when you did San Diego. Is that right? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I I took vacation, uh, oh, and okay. I. Uh, when I yeah I went to the southwest and uh, yeah I wasn't working there really so I mean I, I was uh, taking pictures yeah maybe for a western oh real nice. I want to do another western so yeah. usually when I I travel I combine that with work or I, at least I I'm uh, I'm thinking of maybe a, a future project or yeah. something yeah Desert Star was outstanding I absolutely loved it so you did the first two volumes and it was a different artist after that wasn't it. How long ago was that? Because I feel like it came out a few years ago, did it? Uh, Desert Star, yeah, I did that, um, what was it, more than 20 years ago. Wow, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, so it's time to do another Western, I think. I think so, yeah. But a lot of my uh, comics are actually uh, kind of Westerns or Hidden westerns. Yeah, the Eagles because, of Rome is a western in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Eagles of Rome is a western because, yeah, the, you could say the, yeah, the Romans are the cowboys and uh, the barbarians are the Indians. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's um, and there are many horses. They just don't shoot. They don't have guns, but they have swords. Yeah, I, I think it's it's uh, unconsciously is, it is yeah, a sort of a western. Yeah, yeah. it is. Could be. Could be, be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could actually the same story could have place, could take place in in uh, in the far west, in the old west, uh, yeah. uh, with the tribes of you with know, the tribes, the way, yeah. yeah, and um, so it's it's actually uh, actually it's, it's more a, a, a story about friendship okay. and uh, yeah. difficult friendship and uh, between a barbarian and a Roman, and, and while well, they get separated by and have to fight each other because. They, each one is standing in, a, in in the other camp, and and they have a. So it's it's a, it's an epic story. So in, it's an epic, um, and I like history. I like uh, the Romans, and I like the ancient history. Yeah. So I wanted to combine that. You you really feel that in a lot of Bond because um, gladiatorial times and the Roman times are dealt with a lot by 
French and Belgian creators. We don't really see it in the West quite as much, you know? Yes, no, actually, yeah. We, 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 the, the European, I mean, uh, yeah, the French and the Belgian uh, comic are very um, various. I mean, they have to treat, uh, they do now a lot of graphic novels too, and uh, yeah. and you you can you can really tell every everything. You, you don't have so you don't have limits actually. Yeah. No, um, no. Which is more dif- in, when you're doing comics in America, you have certain limits. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's what we get onto now. I understand. Batman, you've been a big Batman fan for years, is that right? Or yes. Was it always a passion project for you? Yes, I, I, I grew up with, I grew up with, with Batman, yeah, right, when okay. I was a kid, yes. So it's one of my favorite uh, superheroes, still is, yeah. yeah. So was it distributed in, where you're from, you're from were you born, were you brought up in Italy, is that right? Or? Yeah, part in Italy, in Switzerland, so yeah. in Europe, actually. And uh, yeah, I, I always collected superhero comics and um, I'm a fan of Spider-Man too so uh, Avengers or, yeah. so it I'm a fan of manga I'm a fan I mean I I have a lot of comics at home so it's uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> from every part of the world so yeah. when something is well told or and especially also well drawn I I buy it and I um, I'm a co- I'm a collector. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. Good. It's good to know sometimes that the creators love the projects as well, you know, yeah. love the characters. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm an artist, but I'm a fan too, so it's uh, yeah. always been... Um, yeah, I grew up with Batman, so to do a Batman was so natural to me. Uh, I was so glad they let me do it. Um, yeah. And it, I knew... And I, I mean, I knew the universe, Batman universe, so I didn't have to... I didn't have. I mean, yeah. I I just knew it. I, don't, I didn't have to uh, uh, to to get into it. To to so and had a, a story in mind to, to they, and they they let me do it. So it are was. you doing any more with Marvel or DC or anything like that at the moment? Uh, yeah, maybe later. For for now, I have contracts for on my Eagles of Rome and right. as Scorpion will come out. Yep. Oh, cool. uh, Love it. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll do some more Scorpions later. Um, I have a crime graphic novel I want to. I'm, I'm working on uh, right okay. now. So I have other projects with yeah. with uh, European, uh, especially with uh, Dargo, my uh, French and Belgian edit uh, publisher. Uh, so I want to do that first, and yeah, maybe do another Batman or a Joker or something, le- yeah. a, a follow up. I would like that. Yeah. So if you could you choose any American or English character. Who would it be? Have you got, you know? They give you, they get you, get you to have a choice. Who do you want? Who would it be? Uh, like a hero, like a super char- yeah. a character. I don't. I, it's, there's so many. <laughs> um, actually, I I would like to get back to the Joker because I miss him. Yeah. Kind of miss him. Yeah, because he was really fun to animate. Uh, but yeah, there are some cool Marvel characters too. So. Yeah. I can see you doing know. an absolutely brilliant I have black, to black Panther it first, yeah. and then yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to pay first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, what have you got coming out next, Enrico? So next it will be uh, the Scorpion in, in French and uh, probably in English too. Uh, yeah. That's the twelfth book, um, and then the, the next next project is uh, it's it's a noir. It's a uh, it's kind of a film noir inspired uh, story okay. so it's set in the 50s in America okay. and I'll I'll try to do it in another technique maybe less color more black uh, gray tones and black oh, okay. uh, black and white yeah, yeah something who uh, it's in a sort of tribute uh, yeah a tribute to these movies I like right. uh, okay. the film noir movies yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, oh, brilliant. yeah we'd love to see that yeah it's more uh, yeah I just want to have fun with that. Like I had fun with, with the Batman, so I just want to ex- experience some different styles, different techniques, um, different storytelling too. It will be my first graphic novel. Yeah. It will be that long, so it's... So I'm just experiment, experimenting uh, these, like, yeah. right now, so... I have to say, thanks for your Instagram and your Twitter posts. We're addicted to your Instagram posts. Oh. We talk about them every week. Really? Well, we spent 10 minutes talking about how you drew a glove a couple of weeks ago. Oh, you cool. just, like, drew a glove instinctively like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, well, I sometimes it 
it, it, it comes out good. Sometimes, well, I mess, I mess it up. So, but doesn't oh, matter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's fun to do. Yeah. So. Mate, it's an absolute pleasure. We're huge fans. Thanks a lot oh, for thank this. Thank you. Thank you. I give you the mic. It's gonna, he, he doesn't mean it. the Jesus yeah. out of you when this comes out. Well, right, I'm here with a, a couple of wankers from Man vs. Rock. Uh, if you want to introduce yourself. I'm a wanky McWankster, Victor. <laughs> I am Kevin Bieber, and thank you, because I understand that wanker is a term of endearment where you're from, so thank you very much. Also, I just wanted to congratulate England on all of its political triumphs recently. You know, um, keep, keep doing, keep, keep setting... The record proud from an American. It means a lot, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah. I, I think we're, uh, we're in competition with you now. I, can't, I can see you guys doing a comic on us soon. It's a race to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. and we're doing a great job. And I wanted to thank our brethren over in England, um, you know. Oh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, congrats to the English soccer team for making it all the way to almost beating Croatia a couple of years ago. <laughs> that was a big, big almost win for the program. Um, so we haven't done this like in a couple of years, so I have to like get everything out that's happened in a couple of years. Um, got a whole blackboard at home. Yeah, I have a I have a list here. Um, so what you, what you guys got out now? What's uh, what's the, the big new thing for Man vs. Oh, Rock? It's awesome. We have absolutely nothing <laughs> that's new or out. We have a new pyramid scheme that's trying to teach people raise awareness for pe penis reduction surgeries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're associating with Herbalife <laughs> on this. Um, Man vs. Rock now is a subsidiary of Herbalife. Uh, keep your penises small and your heart strong. Um, did you get married a couple of years ago? I did, yes, I did. And then divorced, then remarried, then really? divorced again, the and uh, right. did the same it's woman. for tax evasion purposes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm confident that not enough people listen to this podcast for me to really... I can't imagine why it didn't last, to be fair. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> Too soon. No, I, uh, I am happily married with a wonderful wife who lets me go to this convention and leave her with my screaming 18-month-old uh, daughter. So, you know. How have I not seen furry co-pilots? Being a furry myself. Yes. Have I not seen oh, yeah. that? It's, yeah. it's, it's actually the first book that's simultaneously marketed to furries and five-year-olds. So <laughs> we're really capturing a huge demographic, as with our penis reduction market, through our good friends at Herbalife. Go to, go to www.herbalife.com slash man versus rock slash dark web. Is that an X hamster program? Is What's that on X hamster? Yeah. <laughs> it is. I feel like by agreeing to that, I'm admitting too much. Um, <laughs> but, genuinely, what is, how have I not seen furry co-pilots? Uh, it's actually, well, yeah. we'll give you the pitch. Okay, yeah, okay so no. this is actually legitimately a kid's book. It's, no, called, it's it. alternate title is How to Sell Out by Man vs. Rock. Um, <laughs> it's about a space adventure named Tommy who's looking for a co-pilot. And she finds one when she crash lands on a planet full of adorable walking, talking puppies who drive tennis ball cars and shop at Forever 21. So she gets taken to the pound like all d humans do, where she gets I'm adopted so, by... The pages, I'm just worrying what's going to happen in this comic. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and here's the penis. <laughs> There's a man slapping his thighs. Stop, stop. But, yeah, she's... Uh, but it's genuinely a kid's book. It's right? genuinely yeah, yeah, yeah. a kid's book. And I'm who wouldn't want to purchase a kid's book from us? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an interview. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It might put people off having kids, maybe meeting you. I don't know if that's... Uh, what's that? It might put people off having kids meeting you. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm doing my part to control the population. I mean, I, the, the Chinese government imported me into... Well, the question is, is this you guys becoming softer now? Is this the softer no. side since you got, you got married and you're, like, settling down? And This is purely a sellout book. I'm, a, I'm pleased to well, report. No, well, it's the finance more We sickness. have written also a, a collection of short stories. You've seen this one, right? No. Oh, so this is just a collection of short stories, similar to our kids' book. It's, you know, sci-fi and fantasy. Like, there's a futuristic world where it's illegal to be straight. And um, okay. basically that's what... That's called America, We right? call yeah. it Obama's America. <laughs> what they'll do is they'll uh, castrate you, and basically there's a senator. He'll graft his penises into a hashtag. He's known as the hashtag senator. And that's how he gets all his, you know, followers on Instagram yeah. and stuff. Hashtag Senator that Boris is, Johnson. <laughs> and for those that can't see this, there's an actual drawing of the hashtag penis. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And then we have, like, ancient tales of yore, where there's an ancient elephant man who has a dual penis, and he shoots off his foreskins like a shotgun. 
<laughs> so yes, we have gone softer, and now yeah, we're yeah. fully I mean, into the kids' books. The thing yeah. is, you do need to have a flaccid penis in order to shoot off the foreskin. So in that is way, that we true? have. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's basic elf dual penis size. I mean, you've been on X Hamster. (laughs) You don't know this already? Jesus, go with the times, man. No, I mean, to be frank, I mean, the kid's book was a story we wanted to tell. We liked things like Adventure Time. like, And honestly, it was a kind of a challenge for us to, like, tell a story without saying the word fuck or dick. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I mean, we're... our, like, foundation is tasteless dick jokes, so in order to, to write a book without dick jokes, it was... I pretty much had to write it all <laughs> in order to write a book without dick jokes. <laughs> you don't seem particularly changed. I think you're all right. I, I yeah. think you're the same guys. Yeah, yeah fine. no, we're there. We're there. We're still in the muck. So where can uh, people find you wankers online? You can find us wanking under your neighborhood bridge anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you already mentioned X Hamster, so you can find us there. Um, you can still find us at manversusrock.darkweb.gov. And um, our other email address, uh, manversusrock.com. Uh, you can buy Unpresidential, which are a book about Kim Jong-un running for president, yeah. uh, on Amazon. Okay. And we'll end up losing like $10 from each transaction. So <laughs> if you want us to go bankrupt, please buy it from there. <laughs> also, Barnes & Noble, we actually do make money if you buy it there, so that'd be great. Um, or directly from our website, in which case we make the most money. So don't <laughs> buy it there. Um, are you on Twitter or anything like that? We are on Twitter. We tweet you all the time, so apparently it's good that you know that we don't have a Twitter, that we do. <laughs> I don't know that we have a Twitter account. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> let's see. What else can you find? It's the hearts of children everywhere. Yeah, good. Um, Thanks, guys. Thank cheers. You, man. Stars, brilliant. Cheers. Well done, Tony. Thank you, mate. That was good. How um, good with that? I was actually surprised you got a bit of audio, actually, because, you know, I thought you'd just be... Because shows like that is... Um, they're an assault on the senses as well as. Uh, we were trying. I was, uh, me and Arena were trying to go for a coffee and just do a little, a little sort of sum up of what's coming out from Europe Comics, you know. But it was so busy. Yeah. It's like a visual, um, order, auditory, and let's say smelly overload while you're there. <laughs> yeah, it's just like <laughs> non-stop. Don't say it's that like... when I'm drinking. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. Uh, it's. I recommend it to anyone who just once, if you're a comic fan, try and go. Because you can walk up to Bob McLeod or Chris Claremont or, you know, these people. I, I didn't get to see John Byrne because he was sick the day I went to his table. But you can meet all these people, you know. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, big comics heroes of ours are just sitting at their table chatting, you know. Yeah. Sean Gordon Murphy or, you know. Um, you know, there's loads of people. Yeah. It's worth doing. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And we're all insanely jealous. There's a lot of people yeah. listening now who are quite jealous. So. We did very well. Not, not to say it's about money, but we did well. So we will undoubtedly be back next year. Oh, I mean, really? sort of no, no, no point of view. Yeah, yeah. The like, little Hilda area that you guys had set up looked amazing. Yeah, it was a real, really, yeah, really, really nice. Cool. And they had some people from the. They weren't like um, people who had been employed, just you know, like you know, noisy, you know, bang a drum kind of people. They were actually actually had the animators down and people who worked in the studio cool. and stuff, and were talking through it with people. And we had some cosplayers who like you know, it was great. It was a nice little thing for the kids, mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So um, I'm sure we'll um, hear more about New York next year, of course, le- yep. leading up to it. And we'll all get jealous again then. But- <laughs> <laughs> if you um, if you follow anyone's feed, follow Jason Woods. Um, he's he's had some really interesting things to say about uh, how it went and what's uh, and what goes on and you know yeah. the you know how you should act. And it's, it's a good little. He does he does some good stuff on there. Yeah, yeah very much so. Um, yeah. So from one huge um, mega entertainment and multimedia show to some more comic conventions yes we've got some more yeah. coming up that uh, we'll, we'll probably be put a shout out for um but since we started this show we've covered many conventions all from the indie comic side of side of things as you know and you can't do that about without talking about what's the biggest indie comics and art show of the year i think yeah arguably, which is thought bubble um i think if you're listening to this show you've heard of <laughs> you know what we're talking about by now yeah. Um, it's the convention that a lot of creators, comic fans, and more look forward to the most as the year goes on. And I would say it's certainly the show that arguably gets the most new comics launched at. Do you agree? Yeah, we speak to the printers, don't we, about this? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've sent something off a of print, and it's uh, fortunately coming back before then as well. I did it today. Yeah. But yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely the one they'll work to. I think. Yeah. yeah there's lots going on, uh, which, and we've talked about um, thought about over the past few years, but always wanted to go more in depth the sort of stuff stuff you can see at the convention etc whether you visit or exhibit this is this is for everyone not not just like exhibitors or comic makers or whatever so and with chloe here we can finally do that properly <laughs> no, yeah. no pressure yeah. 
No pressure at all. <laughs> Can I also just give a little shout out to the lakes? Because I have just been to it. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yeah, freshly um, back and, from the lakes, aren't you? Yeah, I arrived back a couple of hours ago. So I don't want to, like, them thinking, oh, we didn't mention the lakes. So I, I've, I've just come back from the Lakes Comic Art Festival and it was really good. Um, and uh, well, no doubt we will talk a little bit about it. But thanks to John Freeman, Ian, and Nikki um, for looking after me. We'd, uh, we did have a chuckle. Yeah. Over yeah. the in in and um in and Nikki from the Lakes podcast, we had a, yeah. we had a good laugh. Yeah, I, I think obviously next week is going to be uh, Nottingham Comic Con sort of com- convention special. I think once you're fully recovered and made your notes or, or whatever, yeah, you should do a, a bit more of an in depth. We can compare them, can't we? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. cool. Yeah, so we'll find out more about um, Tony's Lakes experience. But no, no sense. pressure on uh, Thought Bubble as being the big one of the year, <laughs> organised by Chloe, I guess. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she she's the big cheese. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if it goes wrong. What's your email? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. No. Yeah. Before we get stuck into the show itself and all the joys that you'll find within it, um, Chloe, why don't you tell us a bit about like how you got involved with Thought Bubble? Yeah. Um. So it's a bit of a I feel like I. I cheated my way in a little bit into Thought Bubble. Um, so um, I worked for a bank in pensions and investments. For <laughs> <laughs> So you can see the clear segue between yeah. Thought Bubble. Um, so I worked there for like 10-ish years and obviously absolutely hated it. Um, and my friend Amy is uh, the marketing manager at Thought Bubble. And as soon as there was a little bit of a switch around last year, recommended me to Lisa um, obviously, the founder of Thought Bubble. I'm assuming everyone knows. So that's Tula Lote, is, uh, yes. is that right? Yeah, she, had, she yes. was in New York, actually. I didn't see her, but she, she was. was yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I've seen a lot of pictures. I'm incredibly jealous of <laughs> New York. Um, so I went and had an interview. Me and Lisa got on really well. And yes, yeah, so I started being the, just at the beginning of this year. Uh, so I haven't, obviously, I haven't been there for very long. But you've right. you've been thrown in on the deep end, haven't you? Especially yeah. With, because this particular show as well, um, obviously Thought Bubble is synonymous with, with Leeds and that surrounding area. But mm-hmm. th- this year, especially the, co- the convention's taking place in Har- Harrogate. Yeah. So it's yes. moved, Did I say that right? It's the big yeah. contra- <laughs> if, you can't really call it a controversy because it's not. You've just moved towns. Yeah. But it's what yeah. everyone's talking about, isn't it? Basically? It's literally yeah. the town next door. So it's, if, if, <laughs> yeah. if you can get to Leeds, it's a 30-minute train to Harrogate. So it's, yeah. it's super close. Yeah. So with all um, so that yeah, going on, you've had quite a lot to work on, haven't you, since you started? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like starting from scratch. So before where we would have um, just like have an idea of how the tables were laid out to like the bare bones like that, we've just started again. Yeah, so you've um, you always had like that. After you get it done once, now that it changed to the, town, the city centre, it's almost like you just overlay the, the tables again, don't you? you know, exactly, some people are yeah. The same. yeah. So, so next year it'll be loads easier, assuming that it actually goes okay this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's kind of been a bit weird. well. It's kind of been good for me because I've been able to see things from the ground up this year. Yeah. Um, but I am gutted it's not in Leeds. Right, are you a Leeds person? Are you? Is that where you're from, or? I live in Leeds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we still work. We all still work in Leeds. Um, right. And I knew it as a Leeds convention, but yeah. Gotcha. Can we can we dare ask why why it moved? Would you mind if we asked that? Or... Yeah, totally. Like there's been just loads and loads of reasons. Um, yeah. So one of the big ones that if you speak to anyone at Thought Bubble will say is building a marquee is a. F- Am I allowed to swear? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it. yeah. It's a yeah. fucking nightmare building a marquee, yeah. <laughs> um, and you've got to have 24 hour security, which is a huge cost. Um, right. And if it gets too windy, that's it. It's shut down. If it rains, it's shut down. So it's, there's just loads of variables like that. And then there's just nowhere big enough in Leeds to take us. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So I went to see loads of different venues all around Leeds and a few on the outskirts. And the Con- Harrogate Convention Centre was the one that just made more sense to us. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're really excited to have it all under one roof. I think it's going to be, it's going to open up the whole convention to everyone that comes. Yeah. This is the so, so it is literally. I mean, I know nothing about Harrogate or, you know, I haven't been to Thought Bubble for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So I know the experience of uh, when it was around the armories and stuff and you had like, there was two buildings and like a tent in between them. And then yep. last year, it was obviously, it was in Leeds Last Centre. two years, isn't it? It's been last Leeds, two years, probably, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the last two years it's been in the centre, yeah. So when you say it's all under one roof, like yep. uh, Toys R Us. Um... Exactly like Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was They're the not model. Bankrupt, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what exactly? You know, can you go into specifics of of that? 
Yeah, well, so the convention center is made for conventions. So there's yeah. loads of huge, huge separate halls that are all connected. And um, and so we've got two and a half halls that are just literally next door to each other. So the whole thing, you can skip between it. Um, and then we just, we've just we got a separate panel room and things like that. So it's just all... You can, li- you can just walk between them rather than having to go outside. Yeah, I think what, what scuppered it a little bit in the town centre was, and I understand completely why you did it, was the bag search between buildings, which... Um... Yeah. In the busier periods, I mean, I was stuck at a table for most of it, but being mm. the busier periods can be a pain, can't it? You know. Yeah, everything like that that you just once you're in, you're li- you're in. Um, yeah. You don't need to get your wristband checked to go between anywhere. Um, yeah. And yeah, and then and it's perfect for exhibitors as well. So rather than being in a marquee, and you might have chance to run around your marquee. Yes. This time you'll get chance to run around and the I whole thing. You get the you get the yeah. usual, you know comic sellers belly aching where they go oh, our tent wasn't as busy or our bit of the building wasn't mm-hmm. as busy when you you're all in it together you're going to get a fair shake of the you know the dice at every table aren't you really i think it's totally hard. yeah you and know. there was a, like there's a few um spaces that we used in leeds that were really badly lit and things like that that are just crappy for people tabling yeah and we just it. won't have that anymore okay and you've got the no brow and the awesome comics pod next to each other because that's sort of <laughs> ground zero for fun is that where ah, ah, no they've they've wisely kept me as far away from you i was I, gonna I bought, say i bought some I nerf guns doing that. i bought i bought nerf guns for this event to fire at vince <laughs> <laughs> I and i bought chloroform just in case you were there <laughs> um, <laughs> no but there's there's like you say there's three definite sort of areas aren't there because i mean i can't fathom how big this place is when you're, mm-hmm. when you're talking about this because the table um, maps went out to exhibitors and stuff and you've got yep. you got you've got three areas haven't you you've got the comicsology hall the ask yep. ask for mercy hall and the pride hall yep. um now i've only seen um the ask for mercy hall because that's where awesome comics you, you, you can find us uh table 93a um <laughs> <laughs> but but that in itself is already a that's a huge venue so huge, you know yeah. what what are the size differences between the the three halls and, and how did you go about also like naming them for one thing um so size wise they're pretty much so the ask for mercy and the comicsology originals pretty much the same size not much difference at all i think one's a bit narrower um and then the pride hall we've only got half of a hall so right. that's a little bit more like uh, condensed yeah um but naming naming rights go to comicsology who are our biggest sponsors yeah now they sponsored uh-huh. you for a few years now haven't they as yes. i understand it they um they did the artist alley at new york they, they do a few things um mm-hmm. the question i was gonna ask do you ever get any um problems with because of comicsology is an amazon company do you, do you does that ever get any criticism at all there's sometimes like a little um, like rumbling of it um, yeah and yeah i think i think that's totally natural because amazon are this huge yeah um, yeah but Comixology is supporting a massive independent they comic do. convention. That's where I was going to go with it, exactly yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. And uh, Thought Bubble's non-profit as well, so we think we, without the big companies like that helping us out, it literally wouldn't happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got no problem with it. I just I know yeah. I heard some rumbling recently myself, and we, yeah. we the, me and the person who we were being rumbled at, we just sort of, you know. Nah, I, I think what that that's probably one of the misconceptions some people may have about thought bubble if they have any because you look at the website you know certainly you look at the emails and everything and and the branding and everything across the board is is mm-hmm. so sort of professional and, and well done um but you're still you're an indie comic show aren't you totally yeah. totally yeah. yeah and and you know I, I know everyone's going oh thought bubble and it's you know it's obviously massive and it's only getting bigger and you know it's the, this year's going to be proof proofs in the pudding i think with this because we're here there we're going to be there um (laughs) but but obviously it's a fantastic show that's been going well for several years so some people may sort of think oh you know that it's obviously you know you know just big money behind it but it is an (laughs) indie indie show and and you're still totally and and like i said we're non-profit so anything that you that people come and put money into us so you guys buying tables and things like that literally goes straight back into the show yeah Yeah. nice and that also comes into mind because there's obviously the thought bubble um sort of anthology as well right you you, yeah as well as i was looking at that today isn't um who's the lady from the great british bake-off i met her last year because kim joy she's in it isn't she yeah that made me chuckle yeah she um so we kind of share an office which is a little bit weird, right. really? I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, with, traveling, uh, with Kim Joy, 
Oh, I thought you were going to say with the Great British Bake Off. Now, that's going to be a weird oh. office. No, that would be weird. Yeah. Um, so, Travelling Man, who's one of our other big supporters, that's a little comic book chain. Yep. Uh, yeah, we like Travelling Man. Comic shop chain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nabil, one of the directors, and Kim Joy um, live together. Yeah. So, yeah. we kind of chatted to her about contributing, and she was well up for it, and then did this little amazing... Um, Couple yeah, of she was for the. Us. I went to the Catriona Chapman release party at Travelling Man last year, and she was mm-hmm. there. I think that's where I met her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, genuinely one of the nicest people I think I've ever met. <laughs> Until tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the anthology came out uh, this Wednesday. Lovely. Um, and yeah, again, all profits go to Bernardo's. Real. Oh, um, nice. Any so... other highlights from it at all? Or... Uh, well, Luke Pearson's page is incredible. Oh, really? Anyone nice. heard of him? I've not heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Lisa's done a page, a couple of pages in it as well, which is um, incredible as well. Yeah, the whole thing's really great. It's just a mm. cool collection. And is it, how big is it? It's quite a sizable anthology, isn't it? This one's just a regular comic book size. Oh, right. You but did you... like a fold out. Maybe you weren't there the year they did like almost like a fold out newspaper thing. Or yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And we did the 10th anniversary one that was more like graphic novel size. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, we're going to be selling all of them, all, all the ones that we've got left at this year's show, because we discovered a couple of boxes that had gone awry. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Collector's editions. Yeah. 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 Slab yeah. them if you want, Chloe. It... Slab them. <laughs> I might do. Yeah. yeah. Here's a question that I've I've wondered about any indie comic show actually, um, bearing in mind with that anthology, and that is um, how well a, a conventions like anthology and merchandise does at a show in in general. Now this isn't just a, uh, aimed at Thought Bubble. This isn't mm-hmm. just just in general. Now, I was thinking about this this weekend. Funny you should mention that because um, the Lakes sell Lakes notebooks and all this sort of yeah. thing as well. Nottingham and, has um, a, has a, a comic anthology which on Kickstarter you need to back. Well, shit, give yeah, please back it now. Yeah. Um, you know, other show True Believers has a table as well, don't they? All all these conventions yeah. normally have a table, probably near the entrance as well, isn't it? I, I guess mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always wonder, like, how well does the merch do at shows? Or is it part of just the branding? How do you see mm. it, Chloe? Is it? Um, so th- this is a little bit of a, a weird one. So this year, I think, is going to be the first year where we've actually got a merch table. Oh wow! Um, okay, cool. So it's never really been a focus for us before, um, because people love Thought Bubble, um, yeah. and yeah, I don't know. So um, we still haven't really decided what we're going to sell on it yet, though. That's going to be branded up. So if you've got any ideas, oh okay, <laughs> enamel badges go down well. Oh, yeah, we would love those. <laughs> left it, left it too, left I mean, it too late though. What, I mean, <laughs> what about t-shirts? I mean, I mean, yeah. I I see it in kind of like. Like a tour T-shirt. Whenever you go to a comic, conve- comic yeah. convention, I do it every year at New York. I buy a New York T-shirt that's got the date on it in the yeah. year. You know, yeah. The yeah, New really. York merch is really nice as well. They're great. Year. That's a great. That mm. takes half an hour just to get the front of the queue in that one. <laughs> they yeah. do. They do a lot of that with runs and stuff. You know, like I've done a half marathon or whatever, like yeah. 2018. So it's a good little thing because people want to commemorate their time there, and I think that's a good way. Yeah, of doing it. I really like the idea of it being something different every year. Um, yeah. So every yeah, year one of the we artists do... involved. Yeah. 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 So every year we do do um, like a, you know the vol- we've got the red shirt volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We get one of our guest artists to illustrate their t-shirts, and then we have a um, a limited run of those. But that's by the guy that organises it, which is called Illustrated Mind. Okay. So they'll yeah. be selling. It's Gillian Tamaki this year. Yes. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, she's done a really nice t-shirt. So she, uh, they sell a couple of t-shirts for us, but it's not Thought Bubble branded. Not like not okay. like the logo branded. Yeah. Um, so I think they go down really well. Um, but it'd be really, I think it's gonna be really exciting this year to have like his own stuff. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I think certainly because um, it's the first year having the table, like yeah. just comics across the board. When you have table for the first time, you're then judging. Oh, I can. We can push this more next year. We can do this. Mm-hmm. So you know, even on the day of a convention, you you've immediately started pl- almost planning for the next year. Uh, yeah. as well haven't you so yeah. yeah so i reckon like t-shirts tote bags badges yeah tote bags are popular aren't they yeah. everyone loves a tote bag yeah i do i do love yeah. a tote bag i gave Especially you a tote bag a i gave you a yeah. yeah 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 did you give me a tote bag i gave you oh a you Europe did didn't you one, didn't oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice yeah i'm oh, collecting one, them Dan. i can't recall oh i might have one here for you then yeah oh Good. brilliant yeah there you go ah, totes they do goats. well for no brow we have little tote bags and people are always asking for them yeah 
Oh, nice. What do, do they have to pay extra? I mean, I sometimes, yeah. yeah. If they buy a load of stuff off us, we'll give them a tote bag. Yeah. Um, sometimes people just want a tote bag. They walk up and go, "Oh, how much are those?" Yeah. And it's like that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So tote bags and enamel badges. That's what everyone will be getting this year. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm a badge are so great. I uh, do you know what? I've really, I, I've got a thing for them now. I've, I've totally, I've got a couple of cool ones. Big shout out to Sarah Harris who brought me back an enamel badge from New York Comic Con of Outer Darkness, and uh, yeah. Oh, so. she showed me that when I um, a drink with her and the, the cucumber. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Got bitten by the bug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, so yeah, enamel badges. I'm all about them. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go on, oh, bring it, Tony. Come on. No, what what do you want to say? Do you want no, to... I was going to say, I was going to say, if there's any other 14 year old boys out there who want some badges, then please, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? You know it's meant to mean. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So badges, um, We had some badges at New York, and um, that's what got people to the table. I'll be quite honest with you. Really? Yeah. People saw them and came straight over, yeah. How and much then, do they usually go for then? Do you know more badges? They were $5, our badges. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah for like seven good. quid. It's, yeah. it's interesting yeah. how merch um, sells at conventions now, isn't it? Sort of um, sometimes over comics. Um, yeah, just not know. prints. People, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Our prints never sell. Um, <laughs> but... I think that idea of a limited run of prints, like uh, there's a, an artist that's like high up there and they got fifty prints. Yeah, like they're only doing those. That's kind of like there's a worth to it. But when it's, I feel like it's an print. You can just bang out as many prints as you fucking want, and mm-hmm. yeah. do you know what I mean? Print prints are an interesting one. Yeah. Um, what in terms of thought bubble though, um, we've talked about the print discussion. We might as well cover this this controversial topic yeah, while we're sure. here. Yeah. Um, and I know certain conventions have stamped down on it, like the MCMs and stuff. Uh, fan art type prints mm-hmm. or or prints of other people's IP, like your Marvel, your DC, or whatever. Um, you see them MCM everywhere um, yep. and stuff like that. Some shows are beginning to stamp down on it. Um, what is how? How does um, Thought Bubble? What, what's the um, deal with Thought Bubble? We we don't dictate or police what anyone's selling. Yeah. Um, okay. We I think the only the only caveat that we give people is uh, if it's erotic. Yes. Don't have it on show. That's the only thing that we would ever tell people, and I guess. Vince, I don't, don't know, press it's... print on those comics. Oh, right, okay, I've got to cancel it now. <laughs> Hang on, I've got to call them. Shit. <laughs> you can sell them, they've just got to be under the table. It's oh, that's right. Uh, you've heard oh, a yeah. previous show, clearly, Chloe. <laughs> yeah, was, uh... We were going to be selling some grot under the table, weren't we? No, it wasn't grot. It's Tony's Oi, comic. It's a charity comic. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know, like, um, it's it's a weird subject because some people are really picky about it and other people yeah. are not about and I don't know. I, th- yeah, I think we talk yeah. quite a bit about it, Zoe, uh, Chloe, yeah. probably. So we we talk a lot, and, and I think if it was my character, someone was selling enamel badges for, I'd probably have the hump. Yeah, yeah. You well, know? enamel badges is, is another level, though, isn't it? I mean, an art print, yeah. like Dan says, you can just you do a bit of fan art, print out fifty, and then you've got them at your convention table enamel badges is a completely different kettle of fish yeah. you've got to go through a real think, process if, you, if there was a red mask from mars print being sold at another table would you have a word with them be i don't know i think i probably would yeah i'd probably walk over and just say i can't believe someone's read my comic <laughs> and, then, and then buy a print walk away. and then buy a print and get them to sign it <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I guess that's the thing. Normally, with generally with fan fan art, yeah. it's huger things that are covered, right? That yeah. people. Um, and isn't there different rules about pari- parodying? No, that's well? America. People use that with America. We. Yeah. There's. What is the deal it, with that over here? That, I'm, yeah, I'm, to be I sure, I'm not 100 percent sure, but there's a there's a limit to newsworthy satire over here. But America has a much broader parody law. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, do you, uh, it all goes back. Do you remember that guy who used to run on to football matches and try and stand in the Manchester United lineup at the picture and stuff like that? Yeah. Do you remember him? He used to try and walk on at cricket matches as if he was the next bat- batsman and stuff like that. Well, he did that to try and make a book. And they said, no, you can't use that because it's using the IP of that cricket team or the Manchester United and you haven't got, you're not licensed to use it. But if it was news, it could be put out as news. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. So there's. It's a bit more. It's it's a lot different from the states here. People don't yeah. realise. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I didn't realise that. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But um, I mean, there's going to be so many creators there. 
um, a, a thought bubble. There's going to there's gonna be some prints of like you know your your favorite show or, or something somewhere. Um, but I th- I think with thought bubble, it's not like an MCM where you see a huge twenty foot by twenty foot stand uh, <laughs> um, just, that's just selling someone else's IP mm-hmm. because thought bubble isn't that kind of show because it's comics mm. first. God bless totally. it. Yeah, thank totally. God. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, so in terms of what's going to be happening at, at Thought Bubble, um, mm-hmm. because the thing that interests me is, and I can't see a lot of the show because it's Thought Bubble Festival. A lot of people talk about yeah. the convention, yeah. but, it's, but it, there's a whole raft of things that are happening before the conventions even start, isn't it? Yeah. So what, what's, ha- what's happening in the lead up? Uh, so, fringe event wise, um, oh God, I should remember these, shouldn't I? It's quite an um, important exhibition. We've got a Hilda exhibition. Yes. Nice. Which, uh, <laughs> so that's going to be incredible. It's free um, and it's running the whole festival. And I think a little bit earlier on, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's in the Mercer Gallery in Harrogate. Um, yes. And there's going to be some of Luke Pearson's sketches. And I think Luke might be going down one of the days as well, but I don't know if cool. that's set in stone. Um, we have a Shaun of the Dead um, screening. And a print that's been done especially. Is it, for an, that. Is it an anniversary of Shaun of the Dead that I'm not aware of? Because the Lakes just had a Shaun of the Dead screening as well. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to guess. Is it like 20 years? It could be, couldn't it? Oh, much. don't say that. No, I'll... it can't be 20 Fucking years. Hell. It's just uh. been 20, 20 years of space, done it? So it can't be. Yeah. Has it? Oh, okay. Yeah. It came out in 2004. 15 years. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, it could be then. Yeah, 15. Yeah. 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 But everyone loves Shaun the Dead, don't they? Oh yeah, of course. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. In fact, yeah, the bloke who did film. our, we had um, some artwork done for us for our, and of our Kirby episode, which was done by Ed Trequino, and Ed Trequino is an extra in Shaun of the Dead. Oh so wow! There you go. Oh, oh, there you go. Amazing. Cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. So other festival events, um, we have uh, a history of Thought Bubble uh, little exhibition that's at the Lee's Library. Okay. Which will be cool. So loads of like our past uh, festival images and um, bits like that that'll be really cool and like mm. pictures from all our volunteers. So there's uh, stuff happening in Leeds still as well as Harrogate. Yeah, it's yeah. just the whole of Yorkshire. The so yeah, Bradford, oh. Harrogate, um, Leeds. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And with, with yeah, with the, with the fringe events, we kind of like if you want to do something in Yorkshire that's comic related. Um. And you let like you're happy for us to list it, then we'll list it as part of the Thought Bubble Festival. Oh. It's really cool, like loads of people contribute. We don't um we don't necessarily organise all of them. People just give us an idea and we'll say, Yeah, that sounds amazing. Um, go ahead. Okay. Which is really cool. Yeah, people yeah, people are people just really love Thought Bubble. It's really cool. They wanna like put time into it for us. Yeah. Yeah, because it's always the. Fr- I know it's only a it's a two day festival essentially, but yeah. the Friday night there's always things going on. I think I think yeah. I went to about three events last Friday night. Yeah, yeah. we've got a, we've got an official opening party as well this fr- this uh, Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because nice. you normally normally have is it called the Midcon party or something? Yes. Like that. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. That's... So we've got um, two day convention. We've got three parties. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> when are these When are these parties happening? One so from Vince's fr- room. <laughs> So on the Friday night, we've got um, a Comixology welcoming drinks party, which is um, at our official hotel. Um, oh. oh, my God. I can't even remember the name it's of it. Crown Plaza, is it? Is it the Crown Plaza? No, it's not. No, it's God, the White it's Hart, a... no. No. Are you staying there? Yeah. <laughs> I've just booked loads of rooms there. That's what I was going to say. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> cool. Go, Chloe. That's why I'm there. <laughs> um, so the Majestic Hotel. Um, okay. Is our Friday night party so from seven thirty? Uh, it's open to everybody. Oh, okay, um, nice. come and have a drink. Nice. Are you going um, up on the Friday night, V? Are you? Or? I am indeed. It's a big old journey for me, so I'm going to be Isn't staying it? over on the Friday and driving back on the Monday. So we told no cool. sleep till Sunday night for us then. Oh usual. yeah, we're like the <laughs> Beastie Boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, the midcom party is actually in the convention centre, um, right. and that'll be the big one. Uh, yeah. Again, yeah, sponsored by Comicology, yeah. and it's that's one be... that a lot of people look forward to every year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It always. I've never been to one, but it always looks incredible. Um, and this year we're kind of so it's the end of the Wicked and the Divine, so we've got some Wicked and Divine um, treats for people. Oh, yeah, did so... uh, one of the creators of the Wicked and Divine DJ one year? I've got. A yeah, feeling. he does it every year. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Is that is that so, Kieran Gillen? I think, who does that? Is it yeah. Kieran or is it yeah. Jamie? Kieran, is Kieran it, yeah. and Jamie, I think, both get involved. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So, and do you say there's a three party? So that's two of them. Yeah, right? so we have a closing party on Sunday as well that's at the Majestic again. That's and that'll people be... are off their not minds. Why are you going to do that? Are they not tired or something? I'm is is, is, is that the one where everyone's just having a round of Horlicks and just just congratulating themselves on. for surviving? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just, yeah, it, it's just a really good, because when you're on the exhibit f- floor, it's just really hard to speak to people. So having oh, all yeah. these little get-togethers that are organised that everyone's going to come to, it's just a chance to like... And do you know what? That's why I'm glad you're doing it all in one venue because... Last year, I got literally got five minutes away from the table, and I legged yeah. it to another place to see someone. And it took me, you know, I had a bag search to get in, saw, saw them for a minute, and legged it back. So it's much better that it's all in one hall because you can always go around and chat to people after closing or before yeah. opening and stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's quite good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what about that? What about named guests? Then is there anyone you wanted to run through and have a little chat about? Chloe or... Um, named guests. God, I feel like um. Oh, I put you on the spot there, have I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the big the the big one for me is John Vasquez. Okay. Um. So when I was a little kid, he was like the first comics that I used to read. Right. Um. So like. And that's Invader Zim, isn't it? Yeah. So he's a writer of Invader Zim that's just come out on uh, Netflix, which is pretty cool. Oh, oh wow! I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think originally it was Nickelodeon. It was a Nickelodeon series. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. They got turned into a Netflix film. Um, but yeah, uh, like Johnny the Homicide and Maniac comics that he did um, yes. years and years ago. Oh yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can yeah, I just really... say um, Daniel Warren Johnson, past guest? He's one of the big names at your event now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. We've um... really seen him climb up, you know, the ladder of sort of people realizing how great he is since we've had it. When was he on? Two, three years ago, wasn't it, yeah, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So. Yeah. 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 I thought he was kicking himself that he couldn't go to the Thought Bubble after he realized that uh, Daniel Warren, Danny Warren Johnson is going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's it's kind of cool when that happens, where um, people start coming as just regular exhibitors, and then they build up and they yeah. end up being guests, and and we're super lucky that they still want to come back and see us. It's yeah, it's really cool when that happens. Yeah, you got um, Donny Cates, uh, Terry Dodson's yep. there. Yeah, um, he's a he's a great artist, Terry Dodson, isn't he? Terry, again, Terry Dodson, some of the first comics that I read when I was a child. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. What comics were those? Oh, God. Um, was it Fantastic Four he did? Could have been, yeah. Yeah, could yeah. have been. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got Dave Gibbons. Any, yeah. Anyone heard of him? He's uh, <laughs> the nicest guy. I'm in like a group conversation with him on WhatsApp, and he's just oh, he's nice. hilarious. Real. Yeah. And you like this one, B. Uh, Dave Johnson's there. I know, and he's on the same table as Daniel Warren Johnson. And oh, is he? <laughs> I, the thing is, the, the, the guest list is, quite frankly, amazing this year mm-hmm. for Thought Bubble. Um, I mean, it's probably been amazing every year, but because I don't go, I'm like, no, I don't want to look, just in case it'll upset me too much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Daniel Warren Johnson, who's one of my current favourite artists, and Dave Johnson, who might be my favourite cover artist of all time, Share yeah. on the same table, and I know what will happen. I'm going to bottle it. I'm going to. I'm going to totally white out and be too nervous to talk to any of them. That's what's going to happen. Maybe wait for one of them to go to the toilet and then get in there while it's just one. Yeah. Stand next to him. Cross now, the now, now, do you? Yeah. Do you mean go to the table and talk to the other one, or take his place at the table, or, or follow follow him into the toilet? Let well, me know because I'm taking notes. So he might, like, big, he might like a sit down you wee, are. you see, Chloe. If he likes a sit down wee, it's more difficult to talk to someone, isn't it? Maybe you don't. You're not, you're not as experienced of men's toilets as we are, probably. No, well, I guess they're kind of trapped then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Just Trust wedge it. the door closed. Get in their cubicle with them. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Please I, don't I, do that. I, I yeah. better say that no one on this podcast is condoning this kind of behaviour at yeah. any convention. Please don't harass the guests. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> be like me and be too nervous to talk to them. So, um, yeah. Olivier, Olivier Coypel's there. He's, yep. yeah. he's a good find. Is yeah. that his first one or has he done it before? I can't remember. I, I can't before. comment. I think, he might, yeah. have, I think he might have done it before. Um, there's another artist um, who's huge on the rise, uh, Bengal. Um, yes. yes. Talked about, what was the book you talked about from Image? About a year ago. Here, I, <laughs> I know. I, can't, I, I knew you were going to ask that. My mind went blank. That one. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely love it as well. I oh, God, I've got to look it up. Talk about yourself. Yeah, Mar- <laughs> Mahmoud Azraz there. 
Um, I like these. I love his stuff. Really good. Yeah. Um, Glenn Dillon is... I'm really excited to meet Glenn. Okay. Um, both the Tamakis as well. Oh, okay. Um, Mariko right. and Gillian. Um, oh, they both there, be... are they? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to be great. And then Rosemary Valero O'Connell as well. Um, right. I absolutely love her illustrations. Just, yeah, just the greatest. And obviously the mighty Luke Pearson, the new the new Hilda's just come out and he's you know yeah. he's riding on the back of the um the cartoon which he works on as well. Oh, and, uh, mm-hmm. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Death or uh, Glory. Yes. That was it. What it was that's called. It. Death uh, or Glory. It. An amazing comic well done, that everyone it. needs to read. Um, <laughs> you also like some of our friends of the show, Martin Simmons, Christian Wild Goose, Steve yes. Cuniff, he's there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ram yeah, V. Oh, Jerry Duggan's there. I like Jerry Duggan's stuff. Yeah, he's yeah, a Jerry great Duggan's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, Carl oh, Webster's. I'm really excited for Carl Webster. Is there anyone you're going to hug and not let go at all, Chloe? Or um, <laughs> other than really... Vince? <laughs> 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 um, no, I'm I'm probably going to err on the side of I'm just going to pretend I don't know who people are. Yeah, because... do the cool thing. That's what yeah. I do. Yeah. Hello, mate. What what do you draw then? I'll do a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you make this yourself do that do that question yeah. oh god yeah, yeah. what yeah. do you do with writer's block that, yeah. Yeah. that question you get... always comes up with panels yeah where do you get your ideas <laughs> from <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm um... hang on to terry dodson's leg cling on like a little koala bear yeah yeah I'm gonna oh, do that. oh do you know what i just imagined a, a small soft toy of tony that looks like a koala bear that you can velcro its well, arms around. Sexy. Calm down. <laughs> Not that sort. Of thing. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so the guest list is amazing, and and the exhibitor yeah. play. I mean, you need to get a thoughtbubblefestival dot com has loads of information there, but it also has like you look at the exhibitor page. And if you want to make your shopping list, this is something I always advise to people who go to conventions. If you're not, if you're not sure what to go for, and somewhere like Thought Bubble you're going to be in a sea of creativity mm-hmm. and you know there's so much amazing stuff everywhere do yourself a little favor and maybe look at the web page which has been designed especially for you to look at and do a little shopping list you know if you see if you see an avatar that you like the art of click on that creator you might and then just add their name to the list of someone you want to check out the yeah show. totally that's that's a, like a great shout um, yeah. just go to yeah thoughtballfestival.com slash exhibitors yeah um yeah I've done that. Um, so even though so our exhibit list is curated, so every single one of these, everyone at Thought Bubbles looked through and gone, yeah, we absolutely love their work. Yeah. And then because there's so many, they get, then get added to the website, and I'm like, oh, my God, look at this incredible person. And yeah. I do the exact same where I'm like, I've got this list of... Have you got an app for your um, convention? We haven't. Right. A lot, of, a lot of them are going that? that way, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that'd be a really the useful York... tool. Sorry to interrupt. I actually found the New York one really useful. Rather than sort of dragging the magazine out, you could just search on a name on your phone. Mm-hmm. I actually thought it was quite good. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, it's definitely something we're going to look into. Yeah. Um, because but... things change last minute as well, so it's a really great yeah. way to to be able to keep yeah. things up to date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I think like you know pre-planning who you're going to visit as well, because obviously most people listen to this. They're going to look at the guest list and then pick out their favourite creator that they're going to go visit. But I think if you pick out a few sort of indie and all, you know, creators as well, it sort of, it will cut down on the amount of. And we all do conventions, and we know what it's like when you're walking around, when you're just having a browse. Sometimes it can be a little bit of an uncomfortable experience because you don't really want to make eye contact because <laughs> all the creators are sort of staring at you, trying to draw you in with a tractor beam from their eyes. <laughs> yeah. Dan, is, Dan's good at that. Dan yeah. Well, well, it's not a tractor beam. It's just his his sexual muscle. A little draw. little glint in his eye. <laughs> it's, it's pheromones. It's been off the past few cons. I got to admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whereas you know when a, a show, especially when you're exhibiting as well, to, to exhibitors as well, I'd, I'd say this because time away from your table is precious. It is. Mm. You know that. I mean, yeah, that's but, yeah. the, the wonder of these of these after show parties and stuff is that you can do all the socialising because when the convention's yeah. up and running. You got. To, you need to be at your table. If, if you're not at your table, you're not going to sell books. You're not. You're not going to. You know. Yeah. And uh, there will be busy times. There will be quiet times. But in those times where you step away from your table, know where you're going. You can't. I don't think in this day and age you can go for a browse when you've got a convention table. You kind of need to know 
roughly where you're going and just make well, that's a what we said with El, that's what we do with lcap is the yeah. first friday we have a, a party for the exhibitors and guests so you can go and shop yeah you know gotcha. cause otherwise you just mm-hmm. don't get anywhere you know yeah yeah i think um i, I kind of i kind of want to disagree with you a little bit whereas okay. Please do. i love i love the idea of when because um I, uh, I used to do craft fairs um, and I had a really similar situation where I wouldn't have time to leave my table but I think you just need to allow yourself 20-30 minutes okay. just to but go don't and find people. stress about not people. making sales, you're not missing sales. Yeah, yeah don't I mean, stress yeah. about it, yeah. And you can always have someone, like our volunteers will always man your table for you as well if you trust someone okay. to do that for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and give yourself 30 minutes to go and find people that you might never have found otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So if, if, because... if you're an exhibitor and like you want to step away from your table then, and you want a sort of like a helper to sort of man your table or whatever, mm-hmm. what you know is there a certain colour of shirt they should be on the lookout for? Yeah, so as red shirt volunteers will always help you out. So if right. you need, if you just need to go for a drink, toilet, go and eat something or whatever, they'll yeah. always help you out. Nice. Yeah, I had it last year. It is McAuliffe was our local one, um, where my table was, and she sort of looked oh, after us. Well, I went down, got some coffees and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Always buy the volunteer a coffee, though, if you're going to do that. I would say totally. don't turn up back at the table with a load of coffees and you can get one for the person <laughs> who's doing a huge favour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the volunteers are the nicest, most helpful people, so if you need anything, they'll always help you out. Um, yeah. And, yeah, just go for a wonder. Um, do, you get, yeah. do you get lots of people applying to be volunteers? I'm presuming you do, do you? Or... Yeah, I mean, um, so Billy, who works in the office with me now, um, right. as, like, our social media person, is an ex-volunteer. Uh, and she oh, okay. came in that way. Um, Martha, who was our assistant director, was a volunteer. Um, and our volunteers come back every single year. And yeah, um, it's yeah, it's really cool. Uh, did you have like ladies on roller skates one year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hopefully they're going to be back this year. I'm trying to get the convention centre to give us the okay for roller skates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, knew I was going to wear mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not no rules against heelys. Yeah. Oh, Tony, you're in. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine Tony wearing Heelys. <laughs> I can't imagine an adult wearing Heelys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm far from an adult, Chloe, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, you've had a, a, a busy year, and I, I guess the next mm-hmm. few weeks are going to be extra busy. Yep. Um, how is your like? How has the experience been since since joining the Thought Bubble team? And you know. Um. The, yeah, just the funniest time ever. It's just incredible oh, awesome. being able to, It sounds really, really, really cheesy, um, but just being able to be involved with something like this is incredible. Um, everyone that I worked with, they're all like the, just like the creative, super nice people. And mm. yeah, when the actual convention happens and I'm like, we did this, probably going to do a silent cry. <laughs> Don't do a silent it, cry. Just, just it, cry. Do a, do a loud one. That's what I do. Yeah. I just sort of sob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I do mixtapes for people at the end of conventions. It's just a mix of Neil Young songs and me sobbing. <laughs> but just, just a side note for anyone going to visit the No Brow Table: he doesn't have them for purchase. No, they're free. <laughs> <laughs> the Rod for Your Own Back anthology, <laughs> only available at Tony Esmond's table. Um, yeah, I mean, you that's what you're asking, Chloe. But is it? A f- all year round job is it it's, it's, yeah. it's that point as well okay cool yeah yeah totally um so um obviously december january is a little bit quieter mm-hmm. but that's when we relaunch the website we get the dates out um get a yeah. new festival image and uh, are you always are you always sort of approaching people who sort of you think oh we'd be a good guest for next year do you yeah. do a bit of that sort of thing as well which already, i suppose is what you were doing at mcm it. were you was that the purpose of being at mcm spread the word and meet new people who might yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We're we're always on the lookout for new guests, and that's one of the. Re- Lisa does it in New York um, yeah. every okay. year, uh, so we have already got a few people lined up for next year. Ah, cool, awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, it's it's a massive all year long. We're a really small team as well, so um, there's only four of us that work in the office. Right. Um, and I'm the only one that works full time, so it's okay. kind of like uh, we do a little bit. All year round. Yeah. So on the on the like actual days of the convention, then where are you guys going to be? Because obviously you've got like the helpers and the volunteers and everything. Do but... you want to give your phone number out now, so in case anyone's got any problems? <laughs> totally. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're on we're we're on the convention floor. Um, so uh, years previous we would have different stations, but at least this year we can kind of be in the same 
building. Oh, okay. um, so we'll yeah. just have little different things to manage. So this year I'm going to be managing the panels. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. So yeah. I'll, be, I'll be around there. Have you got any ones that you can, you're can you looking forward to you can let us know about? or? Yeah, um, the panels. I'm really excited for them this year. Um, so we've got an importance of colour one with Matt Wilson. Okay, um, cool. From Paper Girls fame. He yeah. was just, just won an Eisner. Uh, for his colouring, oh. um, which is going to be a re- I mean, I guess it's kind of niche, but um, it's kind of like an educational, this is how you can... No, we've just done a whole episode on colouring. Yeah, we're yeah. on board with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's super cool. And I think it's we, we have a lot of like art universities come to the convention, so it's just a really cool thing for them. Mm. Yeah. Um, we've got a Science of uh, Marvel panel as well, where we've got like a, a guy that's a science writer. Okay. And it's all about the science behind the superpowers, which is going to be really fun. Okay. okay. Um, and then the sketching spotlights are always my favourite. Yeah. Um, so this year we've got, uh, like, ha- Abs Hardin is doing it. Uh, Sweeney okay. Boo, Mark Ellaby, um, our own Lisa as well will be doing right. it. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I've yeah. just watched a couple of them at the lakes. I went I went to the Staz Johnson and Declan Shelby one. Yeah. And there's, some, there's something very... Um, uh, nice and re- relaxing about watching someone draw on a big yeah. screen. It really is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really cool. It's something you never. Well, I guess. I guess now that Instagram is around, you kind of do see it a little bit more. But yeah, yeah. At least this way, you can kind of like, ask them questions and. And then um, they'll have a sort of comp. You have a compare as well, like walking between and taking questions from the audience and talking about what they're drawing and yeah. why they're drawing it that way and stuff. Yeah, I, I really like that sort of thing. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. We we auction it all. We auction the artwork off um, after the festival as well. Um, oh, cool. Again, again for Bernardo's, so nice. they'll all go up on eBay for everyone to have a go at. Oh, oh brilliant! Amazing, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, where are the panels going to be in sort of you know relation to the actual convention itself? Um, so uh, literally off the end of one of the halls, um, there's a little suite that's called the Queen Suite that's okay. going to have the two panel rooms and like a workshop um, and a couple other spaces in there. Nice workshops are just. It. I know we're talking about them over the past couple of years. They've just got more and more sort of. Yeah, more I think popular, they've become they? more, almost more popular compared to just asking people about their comic on a panel. I think yeah. people are liking that workshop thing or the themed panel. You know, yeah. it seems to be more of the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's awesome that you know all the panels are in in one place. The conventions in <laughs> one place. Yeah. On, on paper, th- this sounds like well, it's going to be a doddle to run. You know yeah, I mean? be easy. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Put your feet up. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> what's the yeah. what's the most unusual? I mean, it's, you're reasonably new to the company, aren't you? But what's what's the sort of most unusual problem that you've had at a convention? Do you know? Has anyone talked about any? Um, um, we I can't remember if you. Uh, we have Millennium Square in in Leeds Centre, which is yeah. massively on an incline, right? And we have oh, to pay what? pay to get it levelled, which is a big <laughs> deal. Apparently, I didn't even cross my mind. But obviously, if it was everyone's things are just rolled down to the bottom. Um, right. So that's a, that's a weird thing that you never think about at a convention, that someone's going yeah, to have to get the floor leveled. That? Yeah. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> um, What's the situation for food around there? Is it pretty good? Uh, I've been to I've been to Harrogate quite a few times, and it's... um, Is it, is it, is it not rude of me to describe it as the posh end of Yorkshire? Is that right? It's kind of posh, yeah. So it's North Yorkshire, which is... Definitely posher than everywhere yeah. else. I'm from South Yorkshire, so the right. other complete opposite. That's like end. Sheffield or something like that, is it? <clears throat> yeah, I'm from Barnsley, yeah. so. Oh, okay, I know Barnsley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um... <laughs> Did you see the pause um... then? She was expecting <laughs> yeah. us to say something. Yeah. We're nice, we told you. We're, we're we nice. Saw you put on Twitter. We saw you put on Twitter you're nervous. No, but we're nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm coming from the complete opposite end of Yorkshire from it, so it's, right. it's way, okay. way fancier. Um, but there's loads of really cool independent uh, food places around. Yeah, that's um, yeah. And there is, the, we've got catering in the actual convention centre as well. So and there's some quite nice little sort of small little brewery stroke pub places as well, sort of yeah. craft places, aren't there? As well. Loads, loads, yeah. yeah. So literally across the street, there's a place called Cold Bath Brewing. Yes, um, I've been there. Very nice. Yeah, yeah I've been there. Um, so they're doing a couple of um, events for us this year as well, and that's incredible. Oh, nice. Um, my favourite place in Harrogate is called Major Tom's, though. If you check that oh. out when you're there. Um, okay. And there's a comic the... shop in Harrogate. It's well unusual for a city these days, but there's one in the cinema. Yeah. 
Yeah, Destination Venus. Yeah, we've had um, the owner on. Yeah, he's, he oh, came yeah. and did a, a talk with us. Yeah, Reggie. Yeah, he's yeah. He, again like um, helping us out absolutely loads since we've come to town. Oh, great! That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. God bless the comic cool. community. Because that was the thing about Lakes. Us. The Lakes is like I'm going to say second or third biggest festival in the UK, mm. and after yourselves, obviously. And um, they don't have a comic shop in the town. So, oh, don't they really? No, there's oh. no comic shop in, uh, in in that town in Kendall. And so I bought a, a crap load of back issues very cheaply in the in the. But all the charity shops roll out comic collections to sell. Cool. Yeah. yeah it's just really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you cleaned up, Tony. You absolutely did. cleaned up. Yeah, I seriously did. Yeah. That's a really cool idea. So we, we always have Oxfam at the show. Uh, cool. um, and they yeah. kind of do the same where they um, they get all their comics out. It's so cool. Oxfam will actually have a table? They've got like a little stall, yeah. Oh, cool. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. Yeah, so again, that might have been something you've never seen before because it'll have been a different marquee or a different yeah. building. But yeah. now it's right at the entrance, so... Oh, yeah, I, I, do you know, I didn't mind the the sort of four venue square. You know, sort of it was sort of you had to walk around the sort of mm. city centre in Leeds. I didn't mind it, but I can see why this this will be a better deal. I have to say, yeah, you yeah. certainly convinced me. Yeah, yeah, um, I yeah, like I said, I, I love I loved it in Leeds, and I love that um, you got to see Leeds and walk between it. Yeah, but just logistics wise, as someone visiting it, it just means you can experience everything now that we're in a yeah. convention centre. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. And cool. also, also at Thought Bubble, um, as well as all those workshops and stuff, you, the cosplay is obviously a big thing at, at mm-hmm. Comic Cons. So you've got designated sort of areas, and like you know, there's guidelines and stuff. I see there's a whole page about a cosplay competition and stuff. So you know, what's you, the you, designated area? Is it just the basement, and you can lock them in? Tony, it... don't be me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're, they've got a really big space this year where you can like everyone can go and get their photograph professionally taken and um and then we have the cosplay masquerade which is on the sunday right um which is a big competition that's going to be really cool yeah oh nice and i know ho- people are really like on the fence about cosplay but i'm not on the fence about it chloe uh, no <laughs> uh, and anyone who listens to shows knows what's like but if, if you're a cosplayer out there going to thought bubble um then come to our table and buy some comics, buy some we'll, comics yeah. and we'll love you forever you know mm-hmm. Even uh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, Tony, you've had cosplayers buy Hilda books from you. Yeah, but that was little girls dressed as Hilda. I, 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 I make exceptions for them. No, you did have a fully grown man dressed as Hilda, don't you? Uh, wasn't no. It, wasn't that MCM? I'm talking about my private life now. Oh, right, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 not that I know of. We might have done. It might have been when I wasn't there, possibly. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, I, well. I question his life decisions, to be honest with you, oh, but, you know, each, each well, to their own, my friend. I've yeah. got my costume ready. Uh, <laughs> you, you, oh, you're going to do Kung Fu? For, do that, a that, that's for, for the Sunday. Week. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Not the same costume all weekend, Tony. What do you think I am, a savage? Uh, <laughs> no, so so literally, you know, there's something for everyone... Not totally, just yeah. not just for the convention, but for like the whole sort of week from the fourth to the tenth, mm-hmm. you know. And it's um, yeah, fair, fair play to all of you lot um, working on it because that's an awful lot of um, different things to juggle. And uh, you know, yeah. new new place, new area to set up a convention. We know some convention organisers who have talked about the, some of the difficulties of actually organising a convention. So um, yeah, fingers crossed, it all goes without a hitch. And it's yep. Like, yep. it will. I think. I think it'll, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. it will. Be, it Brilliant. will be. It will be great. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, the ta- the tables are ordered. It'll it'll be fine. <laughs> Thought about to add some chairs to them, just so we. Just in case. Oh, we... we've just had a chair crisis. And <laughs> can't talk oh, no. about chairs. Honestly, oh. we have we have like a different weird crisis every week, and the one that's just <laughs> happened is chairs. But it's sorted. You will have something to sit on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the crisis. The crisis you'll have tomorrow is all your all your colleagues going you went on what podcast or <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not doing that again yeah. um, uh, most creators sit at the tables because whenever i see them they're always standing yeah, like yeah you, you're supposed to stand aren't you yeah that's yeah. what we always say yeah we say that i mean yeah i it, standing up for two days is difficult yeah. and i yeah. think people should uh force themselves to stand up and i really don't think it matters but i know sometimes it's more it's just more comfortable in it to stand up yeah, yeah. and it's more engaging you know, I mean, yeah. that's, it is that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of feels weird when there's someone sitting at the table and you go up up there. It's that thing of sort of like they're trying to trap to beam you in to buy books. It's, it seems to be amplified when they're sitting down. It's yeah, even yeah. More kind of like, really. 
<laughs> I, I, I find the opposite. that. If someone was stood up, it'd be like, oh god, they're looking at me in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, with dark glasses. It's like going through a market in uh, the Middle East or something with everyone trying to sell you something. You know, yeah. I wear I wear dark glasses and don't make eye contact. <laughs> I think people that like surely you like if you're behind a table, you're not pressuring people to buy your stuff. So why yeah. would you feel pressured to buy the stuff? Do you know what I mean? I think it was like a mutual. Yeah, and there are the odd, there is the odd stall of people who come out from behind the table and like, you know, they're like the the people on the high street you're trying to get oh, you to, yeah. you know, there's a bit of that yeah. going on occasionally. Yeah, not yeah. not big fan of that. No, me neither. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Is there anything about the festival that you think more people should know about? Um, I think all the outreach stuff that we do that's kind of behind the scenes that yeah. um, we so. Um, Lisa's just won a humanitarian award um, yeah. at the Eisner's, the Bob Clampett Award, um, for all the yeah. outreach things that we do. And that's all part of the festival. So, like, we give away loads and loads of comics um, to schools and libraries and loads of things like that that's um, that's all part of the festival. That yeah, I don't okay. think a lot of people see that as much. And that's from the Beverly Hillbillies, is it? or The what? The they were the Clampets, weren't they? Oh, Tony, you're making uh... a reference from... <laughs> 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> I only knew that from repeats. <laughs> yeah, that went totally over my head. Yeah, it's all right, though. It's all right, most of my stuff does. No one understands me. <laughs> um, but yeah, but now um, now we've kind of got this... Um, but there's more people behind Thought Bubble than there's ever been, so we can nice. shout about things like this more. Um, and get it out there. That's what we need to do, Chloe. We need to put comics in people's hands. Or totally. Reading them. Yeah. That's where, that's where we need to go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah we, we get loads of uh, comics taken to libraries just for anyone to just come and get them. Um, cool. Yeah. Is, and that's brilliant yeah. because look, if, if they're not reading the comics now, then in 10 years' time, there's not a next generation going to com- comic conventions. So mm-hmm. we've got to, yeah. we've got to keep yeah. feeding it. Yeah. And ki- kids go free to Thought Bubble as well. So under 12s. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that, to be fair, yeah. 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 So have you, do you think it's got a life on it? We, we see conventions come and go a bit yeah. sometimes, Chloe. You see, mm-hmm. they, they tend to sort of last, last for sort of five years and disappear off again maybe and then come back in a different guise sometimes. But Thought Bubble seems to just keep going on like a steam train. It's, there's, yeah, there's no, I think there's, no there's, it, you know? <clears throat> there's always something new that we can do. Um, yeah. But the, the most mm-hmm. important thing to us is that people are still applying for our tables and yeah. we get more and more every single year. Um, is there any so way that's... that you, you do, or I was getting at with that, is there any way that you do to keep it fresh? You know, is there anything that you think maybe next year we'll do this? Or, you know, how do we keep the enthusiasm up for a festival? It, I mean, yeah, well, UK I mean... came and went, Bristol came and went. You know, Thought Bubble was kind of the new one to me. Not new, but it's the, the, the present big face, you know? Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean... Every single convention, I guess, is like a learning curve that we can see what works and what doesn't. Um, yeah. And you can put more into what works and and just keep going from there. But like like you keep saying, Thought Bubble's all about the comic creators. Yeah. Um, and so it's them that bring something new to us every year. Okay. Um, all the book launches that we get, um, which is just blows my mind how many people wait until Thought Bubble to release things. Yeah. Um, and that's the things that get people in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so cool. it, yeah, if you, there's if a, it's a community one as well, mate. Yeah. That's the thing. It's, yeah. it's, there's a real community feel to Thought Bubble, and everyone. If you are you going to Thought Bubble, where you're meeting up on the Friday night, that's the regular thing, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah, it really. Yeah, is. yeah. So, like I said, because this is my first year working here, little things like that, it like it proper warms my heart, and I'm a very <laughs> cold-hearted person. So it's just <laughs> oh no, like you're that. not. <laughs> you're <getting more bent. laughs> So it's like, yeah, people love Thought Bubble and they love coming to it and they see people that they don't see until the next Thought Bubble. And Yeah. 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 You only see once a year of that event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, They're Thought really Bubble on. is yeah. is some people's probably only convention of the year. Uh, yeah. For some of them. Um, you know, And we're certainly looking forward to seeing some faces that, you know, we haven't had a chance to see some creators that we may know um, because of this show that we haven't had a chance to meet face to face. And any yeah. any listeners, of course, going to the show. Um, then drop cool. by the table and say hello because it's always nice to to meet. And if, if Daniel Warren Johnson has got any of those Ashcan books that he does, yeah, get one because I think I heard recently that the, the old man Skywalker, whatever it is he did for New York, was selling for eight hundred dollars on eBay. The what? Day. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Christ. 
God. Yeah. So, um, where can people um, go to get like tickets or like find out more if they want to keep up to date with stuff that's going on? Yeah. So everything is at thoughtbubblefestival.com. dot com. Um, find us on Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, we're very active on social. Mm. Um, Do you all have the keys to that car? Or is it one particular person that's doing all the social? Um, a bit, Billy's our social media person, uh, uh, so okay. she does all the incredible artwork. And but it, we, me and her, share the uh, interactions. Password. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, touche to both of you because you know. It, that's that's a full time job on its own. Just to, totally, yeah. Just, just yeah. For social media. Yeah, I mean, most companies now, if you, you're falling behind, if you haven't got a social, we have at No Brow, we've got a social media officer. Yeah. You know, it yeah. deals with all that. You've got to have it now. It's yeah. got to be part yeah. of it, and it's, it's part and, of the business plan. And also to like keep a steady social media presence, as well as a, a professional website, and you know, to to keep shouting the word out. You know, it's like you're running a Kickstarter campaign every day of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people ask questions now through social media as opposed yeah. to emailing official. Yeah, things. way, 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 way more on social media than than email wise because it's quicker. You can get an answer, yeah. and then everyone yeah. can see the answer as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Billy, Billy does a really great job at like keeping it fresh and interesting. Yeah, that's nice. cool. Brilliant. So uh, go forth, get your tickets. And, yes, uh, pitch them. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think you have to worry about not many people turning up. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> had a couple of nightmares about it. Oh. Have you some anxiety dreams? Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, but it's 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 going to be it's going to be good. We can't wait for it. And of course, there will be. I might as well confirm that there will be a, a thought bubble sort of special. We'll do. Um, we'll do some interviews on the day, etc. Yep. Maybe we'll catch up with uh, Chloe and, and see if she needs a drink. I will need <laughs> multiple drinks, yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. record me screaming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Just yeah. find a, just find um, one of the people you're really annoyed with and just scream in their face and we'll record that. That'd be good. <laughs> Do like a Donald yeah. Pleasant invasion of the body snatcher style scream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do have a designated screaming room for uh, all Thought Bubble employees. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was screenings. I thought you were doing films, but that's actually screening. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Screenings, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, right, okay. got that at most conventions, I think. Because I'm, I'm due the odd one here and there. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, folks, we, we can't wait wait for it. And, uh, yeah, it's brilliant to hear a bit more about what's going on, actually. So, hopefully, this will be the, the first of a yearly thing that, that we'll do. And, yeah. And uh, get a thought bubble sort of update. I'm, Definitely, yeah. 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 That'd be cool. It, oh, brilliant. good. That, that that means that she was okay with coming on this show. That's no, all right. Uh, <laughs> find the treatment there, Chloe. You're yeah. on next year. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Back you're now. a return guest. And once you're one of them, <laughs> oh, your life is over. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Once once a year's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, so um, stay tuned to this um, show because we'll be talking more about um, Thought Bubble as the next couple of weeks come up because we'll have some announcements etc as, as well and uh, yeah like i say follow them on social media etc but close gonna stick with us to talk some more nonsense and recommend something Ooh. but before we get to that um the shout out section of the show it's almost like we have a, a plan but um do we oh, have any yeah. shout outs this week dan's got a couple of biggies oh yeah uh, do you want me to do the competitions first yeah, go on. oh yeah. competitions we haven't done competition. a competition in quite some time and dan butcher's bringing the heat with two this week yeah you wait for yeah. one and then two come along. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, for the first one, to coincide with uh, Rock of the God uh, being on Kickstarter, we've got a signed copy of Rock the God Issue 1 by John Wagner and Dan Cornwall yes. uh, to give away on the show. Uh, this is so... a really good issue as well. I talked about it last week, if anyone wants to go back. Yeah. It's a really good issue. Yeah. You can actually read the whole issue online on the oh, uh, well? Kickstarter. Yeah, okay. they've got it on the Kickstarter. So to give you a nice taste of the series before you get in there. And uh, the question is this. We wanted the, the issue to go to a real Rock of the God uh, or Rock of the Reds fan. Yeah. And the question is, what is the name of the crooked referee in Rock of the Reds who makes a return in Rock the God? Yeah. And uh, you get a bonus point for telling us where he comes from in the UK. If you can email that into the uh, Awesome the pod. Comics pod at gmail.com. Um, with, what, what should the email title be? Rock the God competition? Yeah. Nice and simple. Or yeah. awesome rock. No, that doesn't work. 
Rock just, the God. Just, do. Yeah, just Rock yeah. the God competition. Just write competition. <laughs> and, We're uh, going to read it. No, we really don't say competition because it could yeah. be. A, then we've got to think about what competition it is. And Dan's brought another competition. Here we go. Oh, yeah, another, another one. one. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we're, we're announced the winner of that uh, next show. So oh, we'll oh next, next show, is it? This is going to be a one week deadline. Just so, there you go, folks. Deadline. Yeah, yeah. Get in touch. Pull your finger out. I say get in touch. Dan says pull your finger out. That's not very nice. And yeah, this is the the bigger one, a slightly more uh, a creative uh, slant on it. Yes. It's the Argsome comic script competition. Awesome. Ah, ah, awesome. So we're setting a competition up in time for our Halloween show, and we're looking for you to submit a three page script for a horror comic, and it's going to be drawn by me. Yes. Uh, so you can make you it as weird. That gold. You yeah. can you can buy that gold. <laughs> get in touch for email. <laughs> no, uh, uh, you can make it as weird as wonderful as you want. Uh, you can pretty much do anything, and I'll, I'll draw it. So uh, don't you don't say no. things like no. that, Dan. Uh, We've done two hundred and twenty plus episodes. You should know by now that you shouldn't <laughs> say things like that. <laughs> but uh, so essentially, you're going to have till uh, Friday the eighteenth. Of November to get your script to us. November. Uh, awesome... Don't you mean October? October, sorry. Uh, <laughs> to us uh, at the Awesome Comic Gmail account, which yeah. uh, Vince has given out. Yes. Yeah, so so if, if you if you put that um, <laughs> just Awesome Comics horror script in in yeah. the subject name and send your e- email and your script to awesomecomicspod at gmail dot com. Yeah. Three page story in and Three page hour. story. Um, Nice horror story. Friday the 18th of November. Yeah. And then we're going to... October. Uh, October. I don't know why I keep saying up <laughs> November. Now? October. <laughs> so uh, we're going to read the final two, what we select out on the show. Yes. And then you get to vote for the one you want made. Ooh, so like when you, get, a, like when you get this comic made, you can do whatever you want with it. You yeah. can put it in an anthology. And... You can print it yourself. You can yeah. put it online. Yeah. And and what we could also say is when we read these scripts out, you could then use that bit of an audio. It's almost like a soundtrack for when you read the finished comic. We can act it we out. We can not do read the voices, Tony. This is so exciting. Yeah. Oh. This you is like a... when we did that advert and we did acting. Is that be, what it a, was? A, a bed of spooky music, Vince. You know I like musical oh. beds and stuff. Yeah. And if, if in your script you can involve the words who's at the door, we'd love that. That'd be amazing. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, get your creative uh, socks on, yeah, and uh, get right in. Yeah, Dan will draw literally anything. He's just said that. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, yeah. help you, butcher! <laughs> Lots of don't get banged up for it. <laughs> yeah, no hentai. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, you know, we, we are going to be reading these and judging ones, so we're not just going to pick the most yeah. filthy book to get him to draw. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. But like, if you wanted to put this in an anthology, this is a good shot as a writer to kind of yeah to uh, get something, and you, you you'll be able to hire his artwork to to put it wherever you want. Who knows? So, Who knows? It may appear good in a future awesome comics anthology. Oh, Maybe. so many ideas, so many things going on. But seriously, yes. folks, we're, we, I mean, all joking aside, we're excited about this this competition as well. So, um, yeah, it's a brilliant idea by Dan, and we love lo- we love it when the competitions are like creative as well. So, um, yeah, they don't have to be stupid and funny. We're not looking for a comedy no. script; it's a horror script. So, if you want There's to do something, else... characters, and don't write it about us. Yeah, I don't want to be like Tony gets brutally murdered on page one. I know that's going to happen at some point. <laughs> yes, try, every, yeah. every one of my scripts starts with that. I would say try and use it as a kind of calling card for your writing skills. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because despite what you hear on a weekly basis, we do genuine. We're serious about comics, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so there you go. Um, do you have any other shout-outs, Dan? Uh, only Kickstarter. I'd say only Kickstarter stuff, but uh, the uh, Last Sheriff. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's on. Yeah, that's absolutely demolished. Got 100 percent funded in 32 hours, but uh, still got 28 days to go. We were talking back previous, back, 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 yeah. talking previously about building up a following, and that's what the uh, Reckless Hero Boys have done, yeah. and it it it's working out well for them. So uh, yeah, go go check that out. Yes, uh, go, go on. on. I got again. There's a a deal on there where you can get all the previous issues in a pack. So if you're behind, you can uh, jump on there. Or alternatively, I think they're all on the uh, Comic House. You can read it on there. Oh, cool. Speaking of the Reckless Boys, they do the cover to the other Kickstarter we're going to mention, which is Nottingham Comic Con Anthology Volume 4, Slings and Arrows. 
Brilliant. So they've done the, co- the cover for that. When you hear, if you hear this straight away, you'll have a matter of, oh, I think, like 12 hours to back it. Yeah. They did a very short window, and they could do with some help. Yes. Um, all of us and um, our brother, Mr. Prolix, are in it, and um, I've got to tell you, there's some cracking stuff in it, so please do go and back it. So as of, as, as of Sunday night, it's got 47 hours to go, so you won't have long, but please do. We'd love to get this over the line. Get on it. Yeah. Yep. I've yeah. got one other shout I almost forgot about. Okay, man. The awesome comic podcast art challenge. Remember oh, yeah. Got to, got to yeah. Get, by the end of October, we've got to get some uh, postcard art in, and then we're going to do a blind raffle, and all the proceeds are going to go to the Little Heroes. Yep, good. I've yet so, to do mine. I tried another one today. It still didn't work out, so I'm still trying. I'm still trying. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. need to well, do one actually. Go a few can weeks. You, can you that. draw, Chloe? Are you a drawer? Uh, I try. Yeah, there you go. You can join yeah. in. Yeah. 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 Cool. Nice. Um, <laughs> so, where can they find out more about that, Dan? Is that on the Facebook group? It's in the boysadventurecomics.blogspot.com, and there's a, a link there. But I'm going to send you the link now, and you can put it in the show notes. Cool. And I'll also pimp it out again in the awesome comics. Yeah. Group. Or look for Richard Sheaf on Twitter or um, Facebook. He's uh, he's organising it very kind of him. Yes, yeah. good lad. Um, yeah, he'll uh, and have a look at that blog because it is a cracking blog as well. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, very much so. Do you have any other shout-outs, Tony? No, that's me done. Uh, Chloe, do you have any shout-outs? You really put me on the spot there. <laughs> if you don't, it doesn't matter. Sometimes Dan no, has no. none. Don't feel the pressure. Uh, just buy a thought bubble ticket, please. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I as always don't have any shout outs and I'll probably think about them probably about 10 minutes after we've stopped recording so and then I'll kick myself because that's what happens every week I should make notes you'd think I do make notes but I make absolutely no notes can I have one more shout out here we oh, go the finisher. I, Project Hoax is done it's oh, good. Hey. all completed all the files are with Sam so if you've backed that comic it's it should be winging its way to you soon yeah so watch out As for that one. The Spark should have received a digital version of the yes. Spark. In fact, it. And it's at the printers now. Be ready for sale at Nottingham. Um, Nottingham is coming up very soon. Um, we love Nottingham Comic Con, so make sure you come along to that. It's the 19th of October. I'm quite I'm quite excited about um, seeing that in print and uh, yeah. what, what we're going to do for um, Monster Spotters Club. Yeah, we've got some plans. Yeah. yeah, you might be seeing a cover from Mr. Hunt quite soon. Yeah. On, no. another, on a further issue. But yeah, we're really pleased with that, man. It's come out really nice. And it's been a real. Even even Dan helped out with the proofreading. Where it's a it's a real joint project of ours. We're really pleased yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So from the shout outs and all of that nonsense to some recommendations um, yeah. to to see you off for the coming week. Um, who wants to go first? Should we have the guests oh, go first? Yeah. 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 Chloe, what would you like to recommend to our lovely listeners? Um, I feel like a bit of a nerd for recommending something by No Bro. Sorry. Oh, get in. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that No Brow puts out is like the is beautiful. Um, You're right. We're, 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 um, but I, I wanted to give a special recommendation for Americana by Luke Healy. Yeah. Um, just incredible, start to finish. Absolutely loved it. Um, and everything that he does as well. So he just released three uh, new mini comics as well that I'm about to order because they look great. And yeah, his illustration is right. It's just. He's just I interviewed him. Nice. I did a, I did his panel at Thought Bubble. Three years ago, I interviewed him and Amish, Amish Steele at Thought yeah. Bubble. Was, they were both as funny as each other. Oh. Yeah, we sort of, we sort of flew off on a number of tangents. But for those that don't Sad know, Luke, he's, uh, yeah, he was really good. And Luke's um, he's like he does like improv comedy as well. So he's got yeah. that sort of sparky humor to him, and he's, yeah. he's, he's great company. Yeah, you can tell that totally comes out in his writing. Yeah, just the really little does. things that yeah. Yeah, if you see him at any conventions, ask him whether he's still got his thermal pants. He likes that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Bring him to Thought Bubble. Make him come. Yeah, I should do, shouldn't I? Yeah. 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 So, so I, was, I saw him at the, the book launch recently, and uh, it is a really nice book. And it's, it's 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 in the spirit of a travel book as well. People don't realize it's, it's a comic, mm-hmm. but it's also funny and informative and grueling. And make, there's one scene as well, you know, probably if you've read it, is it makes you wince. There's one moment. Yep. Oh, dear. Really? I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, there's no hold. He, he doesn't hold back. He, he, t- he puts it all out there. And it's, it's yeah. And, and, and even though that some of the things that he talks about are just horrendous, it yeah. still makes everyone want to go. And it's like, how does he do this? And he took five months of his life to do that. It's yeah. incredible. He walked Bloody the whole, whole of one side of America, uh-huh. walked up the side of it, Pacific Crest Trail. And it's, uh, 
It's quite a story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really cool. Yeah. Definitely high- highest recommendations. Thank you, mate. Uh-huh. Cheers for that. There you go. Mm-hmm. So, um, who, who wants to go next? Go on, you go, V. Go on. Oh, all right. Go, all right. Yeah. Just, a, just a shorter one for me this week. I've been drawing more than reading um, recently. Yeah, I've seen you. I saw your um, Peaky Blinders today. It's good, babes. Nice. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe was watching an episode of it, and I thought, oh, he's got a striking face. I'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you say a, you know when you say a sentence, and as soon as it's left your mouth, you, you feel... Uh, it's got an oh, image of your fuck. house being like Downton Abbey. Or, he's got a striking face. <laughs> <laughs> he does, though. You're right. Yeah. yeah you're right. Yeah. It's very um, chiseled. <laughs> yeah, he's got a face like a breadboard. No, no. Um but a very beautiful man. But besides the point... <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that now. Let's move on from that. We'll, we'll leave that now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I've got a... I, I took a book from... Uh, that I, I bought recently. I haven't mentioned on this show. This is a Moon Cop. Have you heard of this one? No. A drawn and Quarterly. Ooh, and oh, yes, I have heard. Yes, yeah, is it Tom Gould? Or Tom John, Gould, it? yeah. Um, uh, an artist uh, and creator. Does he do a strip in The Guardian or something like that? Uh, is it... This, uh, he's done some covers for, like, New York... Oh, he's done a Guardian and New Scientist uh, comic oh, strips yeah. and stuff. Um, so, he's, but he's done some standalone stuff as well. And I, I became a fan of his when I'm, I got a sort of anthology collection, which was called "You're All Just Jealous of My Jetpack," which is the yes, best name that. ever. <laughs> I think I'd recommend that on the show as well. I think, I think you did, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You did. But Moon Cop is a, is a sort of sequential sort of story in itself. Um, I literally spotted this in a bookshop. So rather than a comic book shop, it was one that stood out to me. A nice, nice little. Uh, hardback book and it is about and it's about living on the moon and uh, and literally uh, a policeman on a lunar colony um, but there's no it's not a dark crime st- story or anything like that it's more of a tale of of loneliness because people are leaving the colony and and like he's doing his daily beat so as the book goes on um less and less people you know he's visiting less and less people as it goes on it is it is a quite touching um it has a dry sense of humour going through it, but it is a, it is a touching story. And it, with uh, Tom's work as well, it's, it's beautiful. He's got like this beautiful cross hatching. I mean, the arts. I mean, to to say it looks simple would be to do it a disservice because you know we've seen so many comics that, or or books and graphic novels, that there's minimal lines, but then you know some lovely texture and cross hatching and stuff like that. And there's not even that many words on pages. You know, it is literally. He's got a lovely, clean, oh, iconic style to him, so, isn't he? I really so, do like it. Yeah, yeah, so, be- yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, just really like simple colours, just super yeah. nice. And, yeah. uh, and like, there's no, for instance, you don't see big expressions on the characters' faces. It's very simple. Okay. So to mm. do that and to get acro- across, like, emotion and isolation, you know, and there's also humour and, and things like that, but is one hell of a feat. It's, it's something that is deceptively simple, but impossible to do. And. It, it's nice, simple to read. You'll, you'll finish it. It's only like um, it's about ninety-five pages, front to back. Okay. Uh, it's got quite a touching sort of ending as well. So um, it's a lot of emotion oh going goodness. on. I mean, it's a table book of gosh. Actually, I always pick it up. I get many to buy one of his. It's stuff. a lovely yeah. looking book, isn't it? It's yeah. Sort of like you know, yeah, it's, you, you got that yeah. sort of foil um, moon cop sort of word on there. Um, and I just had to get it. I don't know. Um, you can get it on Amazon or bookshops or anything like that. I don't know how much it is in English. It's only got the American price on my book. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, but and it says on the back, "Living on the Moon." Whatever were we thinking? It seems rather silly now. Um, which I think is the best way to describe the the very British way of telling a story about a policeman on the moon. So yeah, definitely ch- check this out and Tom's work in general because it, it is lovely. It's real lovely stuff. But yeah, so put that in put that in your pipe and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's next? Go on, D. You go on. I've got two quick ones. I oh, nice. finally tracked down uh, a copy of Reaper by Robert Kirkman and Cliff Rathbun. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure I originally told this story, but it ordered one off this. Amazon. Yep. Go on. And uh, I didn't check the uh, language, and it turned up, and it was in Spanish. So uh, <laughs> that was a, that was great. So I originally I, I found it again. For, oh, I'll, I'll buy it, and it turned up in English, and I read it through. And uh, I'll put a comment that if a 13-year-old me would have loved this comic, 40-year-old me, not so much. It's kind of... <laughs> oh, that's the one. I saw you talking yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. kind of like got ninjas and people getting their heads chopped off. And it's, it's bloody like... beautiful. Like, yeah, oh, God, Rathburn's the artwork, artwork is fantastic. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there's just not a lot to it. It's just like 
dudes being cool, jumping around, chopping people up. But yeah, there's, there's not no much, real. There's not much yeah. characterization in there, is there? There's some. Seems like there could be cool characterization in there somewhere, but it's yeah. not really explored. No. And uh, there's like a kind of a ghost lady that kind of follows the main character around, and at, at every point you can see her nipples through her clothes, and it's like, wh- why did he make that choice? That, I mean, it's not. That, it's just. <laughs> It's, it's gratuitous, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's not really Batman gratuitous. and Robin, is it? Let's face uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's re- that's a, an odd one. I uh, uh, enjoyed the read for what it was. The next one, I, I treat myself to uh, Stephen King to Stand, the first oh. uh, trade of that, which is Captain Trips. They're making a new series of this next year, and uh, I really enjoyed the book. So. Who's the artist on that? Is it Perkins? It's not Perkins, is it? No. Jay Lee does the covers, doesn't he? Or? Uh, it is by Roberto Aguirre Sacasa. Oh, okay. Oh, That's okay. the script, sorry. And it's drawn by Mike Perkins. Oh, it's Perkins. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I like his stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's kind of got that kind of photo kind of mm. quality. Not photo, you know what I mean? Like It's gone for a more realistic yeah. kind of look. It's fucking annoying. You know you get one of those uh, tags that go off in shops. <laughs> yeah. They've, they've yeah. stuck it in the book on one of the chapter pages. Oh, that's annoying. a bit fucking annoying. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, had that. I bought that um, uh, Banana Splits movie the other day. Yeah. And I was setting off every alarm in central London. And then I got home and I realised they left the tag on the DVD. Of course, I'm walking out and the alarm's going off. And the same security goes, I ain't nicked nothing, mate. And walked off, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they just let you leave. I was going to yeah. say, that's yeah, you must be very convincing. Yeah, I'm yeah. a good liar. <laughs> <laughs> just walk out. They, won't, they can't really touch you if you're out the door. No. But they can. It, I was yeah. going to say, I think they can. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's not legally. We're not giving legal advice on this show. No, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hope not. I don't expect security guard to chin me because the alarm went off when I walked out the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody at could, FOP had to take yeah. the... Yeah, yeah. Could happen in Croydon, though, so be warned. Yeah. <laughs> Reg- regularly happens in Croydon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there Dan was, strolling out of Claire's accessories, and bam, he got popped right out <laughs> <on> the door. <laughs> and they stole yeah. all my stuff. Didn't take the tag my hairbrush. So, uh, yeah, that was me. So I've, I've been reading comics this week. I did read a load of stuff on uh, Comic House as well. So, uh, is, uh, in terms of Reaper, Dan, here's an interesting question. Obviously, you got the Spanish version and read yeah. that through. Which was the more enjoyable experience? Uh, I think the, the Spanish one, because like it was, I couldn't really understand it. So there was like the story was full of promise. Interesting, because like, oh, obviously we with we've talked about many many European books on this show and how, how you look through these books and you know you can't if you don't speak the language you can't understand them but you can still take the joy in, yeah, in the artwork sort of, and stuff um, sort of project onto it but most of the time when we've read the tr- English translations they're, they're normally the writing's just as good as the yeah. artwork isn't it so um, yeah I, I just thought it would be quite interesting to see what sort of experience you had with that mm. it kind of burns me up we can't buy some of those European books as uh, like hardbacks or paperbacks yeah, yeah. I'm about I to want, talk about one actually. Yeah, yeah I want yeah. fucking Eagles of Rome and Desert Star. Yeah, I got Eagles of Rome in French just because um, Enrico Marini did a sketch in it for me. Yeah, uh, no one likes to show off. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, take it away, Tony. What are you going? Speaking of foreign language books, because I'm the edu- the totally educated person that you know, I bought, I got given um, a foreign language, a French book, and the only reason I could read it is because it was wordless. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so what is that French? Yeah. yeah, what's that? What, what makes, makes it, it French? Because uh, if you it's all the stuff, the, the the stuff on the back is in French. Oh, Un homme right. qui vit l'état sauvage. There you go. I won't read the whole thing. Yeah, something. What's it called? Know. It's called Trap. So it's called Trap. It's by Matthew Bernay. Um, I've just sent you two guys some sort of apologies. You don't get to see these on the the WhatsApp group. That some some interior pages from it. Tony, um, Tony will post them on the on the group. Yeah, I'll stick them on the group right. as well. Cool. But it, it's um. It's a wordless French comic, and it's um, published by Dargard, and it was given third third mention for her today. Uh, Arena gave it to me as a present when I met her at uh, New York, and she says, oh, have a look at this. It's You'll be able to read it because it's got no words in it, which is quite kind of a... She brought it over <laughs> for me because she knows how thick I am. <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh... That's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's actually a lovely book. It's a really, really impressive book. So um, it's paperback-sized, uh, 176 pages. It's a kind of... I'm going to call it a fantasy story, but it's down like flipping weird um, in the, in a totally brilliant way. And it's kind of completely joyful in its strangeness. 
Um, and it's got that sort of droll sense of humor that you get maybe, you know, in some of the, the shorter stories in heavy, in heavy metal and stuff like that, you know, from French and Belgian comics sort of thing. Mm. Um, so a human savage lives in a wooded and mountainous landscape uh, with his blue dog. Nothing's the normal color in this. He hunts um, sort of strange beasts for food, but then he skins them and he wears their fur and he transmutes slightly into that creature or totally into that creature. And he can... Um, remain within their being for a short amount of time and if he if say for example he skins a sort of large rabbit creature he'll get like um super hearing because of the rabbit ears and stuff like that and part of it is he 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 might be he might be slightly taken over by the animal so he might become a a huge sort of lion type creature all the creatures are totally reimagined animals so whilst i say it's a blue dog it's kind of a dog you know there's mm. kind of a lion in it, but with an extra sort of large gaping mouth that opens and can, you know, can bite a tree in half and that sort of thing. Um, the savage and his dog begin to explore their world and they go on sort of various adventures in it. Um, they, um, they encounter just the weirdest, just the strangest sort of landscapes and people and um, wizards. And it's, but it's quite savage. It's quite brutal. It's not a kid's book at all. There's a lot of violence in it, a lot of sort of bloody violence. There's quite a lot of death in it, actually. Um, it's, I'm going to say it's like the art style of, say, something like Lucky Luke mixed with um, Gru the Wanderer, a little bit of that somehow. Okay. Yeah. Um, very sort of creative designs, uh, really sort of imaginative stuff. And I mean, I'm a vegetarian and most of this is about killing animals, but they're so weird. It doesn't, I, I never got an irk from it, you know, mm. at all. Um, it's uh, there's one of my favorite sequences is where um, the human dons um, a goat's fur coat and he climbs up this sort of strange yellow and green mountain and he gets attacked. And what he does is he, he as part of being attacked by this sort of fire breathing warthog stroke lion creature, he fall they both fall off the mountain. So he catches a flying squirrel as he's falling off the mountain, bashes it over the head, kills it, and then puts it on his head so that he can then glide to a vine. So it's that sort of non-stop act. You see what I mean? It's like if you took a load of magic mushrooms and created a comic. That's kind of where it sits. <laughs> you love that sort of stuff. I do. I do love that stuff. I'm just looking at the illustration. It looks incredible. It's really like, it's um, it's kind of like Tintinny. Yeah, the, the palette's like Tintinny, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so wonderfully strange. It's just yeah. like bizarre the good thing the good news is you can get it on comiXology so it's 7.99 in them um, uh, in a digital format and i'm hoping that they're gonna somebody's gonna because it, it's not gonna be expensive to translate let's face it so <laughs> uh, come on self-made hero or something like that you've got to get hold of this you know i can yeah. imagine this guy's got a few books up his sleeve but uh, it's really good it's um, i'd love to see us put it out it's, it's, it's definitely got us the cover is um him standing there with a sort of fur hat on from an animal he's killed but they've spot varnished just his hat and he's sort of standing in the middle of like just loads of just some of the designs and more of the creatures that are in it in the book sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's uh, it'd be I'll tell you what would be the perfect accompaniment if you were saying reading something by Jim Woodring. You know, we talked about Fran and all those sort of books hmm. when we had Andy Barron on. If you read something by Andy Barron and then read this, I would suggest it would probably be a good sort of accompaniment and just a fuckload of psychedelics. Don't do drugs, kids. But uh, I would say that's uh, that's what you've got it. Yeah. So that's Trap by uh, I his name Matthew Bernay. Okay. Nice. The only oh, drugs you need are comics. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a group of fantastic. And let's face it, they're more expensive than getting hooked on heroin or crack. So you're fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, yeah, plenty of uh, great titles there for you to go forth and check out and start reading um, before the upcoming conventions. Speaking yeah. of which. Um, the next show will be from Nottingham Comic Con. Yeah, we're looking 2019. This. We will be there. Um, we will have a table. So, so drop by. Do drop by and say hi. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, if yeah. you come up to the table and say, have you got the special stuff? Yep. Then you will be able to get your hands on a copy of Tony Esmond's uh, anthology. A brown comic. envelope will come from under the table. Yep. I will have copies Joe, of... who is uh, uh, Vince's fiance will just groan <laughs> what are you doing and we will sell you a copy of my new comic yeah, based on a lot yeah, of prostitutes yeah. now now yeah. obviously this is a is a funny way of selling 
um, th- this <laughs> book, but it's a serious book and it's a very good, very, very and good it's for book. A yes. it's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, and it's the Whore Chronicles. So, yeah, if you want to get that, uh, how do we, are we doing three? That well, I'll be doing it. I think I'll continue the special price of three pound fifty. So it's only three fifty for a thirty-two page comic. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. So Good. you will get a, a brown paper bag with a copy of that uh, <laughs> that, that Tony may sign. Yeah. With a pen. I might write something. Um... <laughs> I, I signed one for the Men vs. Rock guys, and they were sort of actually quite touched by it, which was off tape. Funny enough. Ah, uh, so well, yeah, naturally awful. it was. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> didn't want to break character for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we will have comics, we will have artwork um, and stuff like and badges and, and all sorts of kinds. So come to the table, talk some Are comics with us. Are you coming to Nottingham, us. Chloe? Say that again, sorry? Are you coming to Nottingham? I would really like to. Too busy, um, yeah. Well, it, it kind of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of... I'm just weighing it up, actually, because it's, it's a really easy trip from Leeds, so maybe... I was thinking It that. looks like a really cool little show. Yeah, it's really sort of family-friendly. Yeah. It's a fun one, yeah. It's only a day. It'll yeah. And it helps charity as well. It helps charity. So cool. Always good to see. So hopefully see you there. So so next week um, we'll have like audio. It'll be more convention talk because we are deep in the season of conventions, Mm -hmm. and Thought Bubble is going to be like the huge firework show to finish it all off for the year. Yeah. Yeah. So and thank you again, Chloe, for joining us. No worries. Thanks for having me. It's been brilliant. And uh, yeah, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you got some information from it or you know just let us know if we messed anything up uh, but if there's anything else that you do want to know um then you can or if you want to join our competition by the way uh, you can email yeah. us awesomecomicspod at gmail.com follow us on twitter at the awesome pod where um have i given you guys the password again yes good yeah, yeah. right that's all right <laughs> so it's, it's not just me just not posting anything in the week it's they, they, these two can look after it as well so that's why social media is important and don't put it in my hands so <laughs> but but follow the twitter at the awesome pod go to facebook.com slash awesome comics podcast and like us there and like i say you can keep the conversation going every week at the facebook group awesome comics talk um maybe you, you, you say oh i don't want to do facebook i don't like facebook Trust me, you can just log on and check out this group because it's just people talking about comics, making comics, conventions. There's no hard selling or anything. There's a great... Well, it's not great. It's fantastic, the community mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that's there. And it's got nothing to do with us. We just set the page up and then it's got life of its own. That uh, Inktober thread is going fucking crazy. Yeah, it's been yes. good, that man. Yeah, yeah. really good. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to see some awesome art, then definitely yeah, search for Awesome Comics Talk on Facebook and join the group and get stuck in and get involved. And yeah, thank you for listening to us, whether on the website awesomecomics.podbean.com. If you listen to us on iTunes, leave a review, sh- subscribe, share, just put, get the word out about this show and all these great comics and conventions that we talk about weekly. And whether you listen to us on a network like Spotify, Stitcher, Podnose, Podknife, what other networks are we on, Tony? Well, just because of Jeff and Jake in New York, um, you should listen to Pod Fanny Pack of Power. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call a bum bag I was trying to get him to call it a bum bag uh, I won't tell you the third word we had for it but you know why has it always got to come back to bum bags with you <laughs> <laughs> it's never ever come back to a bum, bum bag. bag don't bum listen bag. to him he's all about bum bags he is, he's literally all about bum bags <laughs> so when you see him at a convention just ask him about them yeah I always yeah. got one on <laughs> like an 80s wrestler there's Tony <laughs> Actually, they're making a comeback, aren't they? Are they? Yeah, I think so. I always wear one with my tape Walkman. Oh, <laughs> that is retro. Yeah, I mean, it's not retro because yeah. Tony just <laughs> he hasn't changed anything since 1982. No. <laughs> it's, like it's like a stopped clock. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, where can people find us online, etc., Tony? Never on anything.blogspot.com oh. or S A S E Z O H Y Z on Twitter. Nice. And if you can't make it to Nottingham but want a copy of uh, Tony's comic, where can they get it, Tony? Uh, never on anything.bigcartel.com because I'm corporate and branded. Uh, <laughs> yes. I still don't know it. Yep. And talk, uh, talking about more awesome comics, where can they find you, Dan? You can find me on Twitter at Vanguard Comic and you can read Vanguard at VanguardComic.com. There you go. Back and cooking with gas. Love it. Thank you. Yes. Your yes. audio didn't speed up at that point. That was just Dan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you for the little um, sort of 
uh, Easter eggs in the latest strips, Dan. Very cool. Yes, both the, the Horror Chronicles and Red Mask pop up. Yeah. Oh, why well, haven't I seen this? I need to see this. Oh, Christ. Right, you haven't now. been so, reading it week on week, Tony. On the, on the floor in the bedroom, there's like the, the guy's read it and it's on, it's on the floor. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, you know, and I retweeted it and everything. Uh, right, I'm going there now. Oh, yeah. So I was yeah. tagging you That's in. Again. Ta- Tony Esmond, <laughs> you are a sham. <laughs> uh, and speaking of a sham, uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jester Diablo. And you can find out more about my comic at theredmaskfrommars.com. Chloe, once again, you've been a legend. Where can people find you and Thought Bubble online, etc.? Uh, Thought Bubble is more important. So Twitter is Thought Bubble UK. Instagram's Thought Bubble Festival and then just thoughtbubblefestival.com to get all your tickets and info. Awesome. But you're important too. Just know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I mean... Hey, she, she's setting up a screaming room at Thought Bubble. Yeah. I can't wait for this. Yeah. <laughs> it's private though. It's just for us. Uh, oh, oh, oh. What, what, just for the thought? What, you mean like exhibitors and stuff can't go in there? No, no, sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, that's completely changed my show um <laughs> anyway thank you very much for listening this week folks uh stay tuned for for more news etc week on week and uh, go forth read loads of comics get ready for the, your next convention experience and from dan tony chloe and myself have a brilliant week and what do they do stay awesome <laughs> bye everyone see ya, see ya. bye Give me 28k, I'll kill a man. What? Should we get started? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, do it for, I'll do it for £100 a week for three weeks. <laughs> that's that's something else, Tony. Oh, yeah. And that Indiegogo goes go nowhere, so you might want to take that down. Um... <laughs> Once if you did a story with a Kickstarter-type business for assassination, you said, right, we're going to kill so-and-so, and people got to give money to it. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, and a different person based on a reward here. This is genius. Oh, my God. It's like if you go on the dark web, everyone goes, oh, if you go on the dark web, you can find a hitman. No, you can find a site that claims to be a hitman and will take all your money. Yeah. 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 Uh, why did everyone go, yeah? yeah we all <laughs> about it. I've listened to a podcast about it. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. People get fucked sure up for have. money. Yeah, I can imagine that happening all the time. Yeah. Oh, you're trying to claim your money back for hiring a hitman on the dark web. Yeah, good yeah. luck with that, my friend. The, the one that I listened to, he tried to hire an assassin to kill the assassin that had stolen his money, and the second assassin <laughs> was also someone to steal his money. <laughs> Brilliant. Just a, like an inception of... That's like a metaphor and... for life as well, Chloe. <laughs> yeah. yeah.